Welcome once again to the PokerStars Arena and the Spring Championship of Online Poker 2021. Today, we are streaming an event that started two days ago with a field of more than 28,500. Just nine players remain. They're about to play down to a winner. It's the final table of the $55 Sunday Million Special Edition with me, James Hartigan, and him, Joe Stapleton. Hello, my Sunday Million Dollar Babies. Joe, I think it's fair to say we've had a blast covering the high rollers, but it's nice to show some love to the low buy-ins for once. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a chance I might be a better poker player than one of the... Pl no, actually, probably not. No. Uh, let me stat you, Joey. Our daily overview of the series, and we have reached approximately the two-thirds mark with 200 games now in the books. We're getting so close to having a million entries across the series. Total prize money has exceeded $77.5 million, with more than 11.5 million paid to winners. Well, a lot of events finished on Monday, so let's catch up with our scoop correspondent. He's got the looks, he's got the brains, he's how it's works. And Howard, we finally saw a win for Team Pro last night. Claps for Mason Pye. He has a scoop title. Yeah, and, and this was a great, great win as well. Uh, Mason Pye, he won the 109 stud. He, he won 6K, so not the biggest event that anyone's going to win. But man, this is emotional. You should check out his Twitter, watch the clips. He woke up his mum at 3 a.m., gave her a big hug. She didn't understand what was going on, but he was just delighted. He was crying. It just meant so much to him. It just goes to show what, what poker can do to people. Like Mason Pye is so enthusiastic. He loves mixed games, and he won one in scoop, and it was brilliant. Ah, oh, Mason Pies is mom's little 109 stud. Any other winners from last night uh, whose names we might recognize? Well, yeah, uh, Klaus Segerbrecht, Oliver Weiss, we've both, they've both won tons before. Uh, Renan Bruschi into that 930, uh, he won another event. Uh, and then Patrick Leonard. So we've got to talk about Patrick Leonard. He won his second in yeah. as many nights. Uh, the brilliant British player, and he's just won another 5K. Well, if we got to talk about Patrick Leonard, we got to talk about the player of the series leaderboard, I think. Uh, true, yeah, because he now takes over the top of the overall player of the series leaderboard. Uh, he's leapfrogged everybody. You said never Nina sat there for, for for days and days and days. But Patrick Dennis, two titles have just put him over the top. Uh, so he's like done incredibly well so far. He's made nine final tables, two wins, but there's still a long way to go. Am I right in thinking that this Alexander's 10 character hasn't actually won anything yet? You're totally right. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's phenomenal, though. I mean, he's... One, he's had 84 caches from 278 entries. Hasn't won a title, but he's only 15 points back, so he could easily leapfrog anyone. 84 caches, that is absurd. Howard, we will catch up with you again tomorrow. For now, thank you very much. You're welcome. Good night. Okay, let's see who's still alive in 65L, the $55 Sunday Million Special Edition. Well, the chip leader coming into this final table is Robin Nutas, Nutter21, who we saw make the final table of the $109 buy-in Sunday Million just three weeks ago. Uh, 49 big blind average. So you might think quite a lot of play in this, but remember, it is a progressive knockout tonight. Always leads to more aggressive pre-flop play. Also means that the payouts only tell half the story. And remember, that first and second prize will be separated by that final all-important bounty. So expect the winner to walk away with potentially a six-figure score this evening for a $55 buy-in. $1.4 million prize pool with that many entries in this event. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited to say it's unicorn time. Please welcome back Griffin Benja. Oh, thank God he put his horn hey, away. Hey, guys. <laughs> you know, guys, I actually have a bit of a confession to make. Um, I played this event on Sunday, and I even made day two, and I finished the top 600. I had no idea there would be a conflict with this final table. And frankly, I almost made it. Uh, so I really, you know, apologize to you guys and the fans. 
Uh, so I mean, so I'm sorry, would've... are you apologizing for not making the final table or are you apologizing <laughs> for potentially missing today's yeah. work day? I, the, the, the latter, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm apologizing okay. for I'm, I'm apologizing for almost uh, missing a shift today. Yeah, that's okay. okay. Well, it didn't happen, and we've already got action on the very first hand of this final table. Chip leader opened with King Jack. We get the three bet from Marganov with Ace Ten suited, and Marganov has flopped top pair, top kicker. Marganov, the player with the biggest bounty, worth nearly three thousand dollars. Small edit, James. This was just a raise under the gun one and a call from Knut in the... I'm line, sorry. All good. You're right. You're absolutely right. First error of the series. It finally happened. Oh, no. There have been more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly from me. James is first. Too good. Wouldn't be surprised if we see a cheeky lead here and a big one uh, from big Canute. cheeky lead. Yeah, definitely with a float like that on the flop, going to have designs to start bluffing some turns with more equity. We can see that nine gave them a gut shot, but with the brick on the river, I haven't seen Canute might be. Go ahead. I was. I haven't seen a what lead haven't you that seen? big and that cheeky since Ricky Henderson. <laughs> nice. I mean, again, this is one of those pots that's just superb news for all of the shorter stacks. This is one and two in chips going to battle and wow. a 35 million chip pot that gets pushed in the direction of Marganov, narrowing the gap between themselves and Nutter 21. By the way, Nino 1990 not only has one of the best cat vitars I have ever seen on PokerStars and therefore is practically guaranteed to win this scoop event, they are also very good friends with players that we know both from online and live poker. Nino is friends with Seven's guy, Andre Latau, and Christopher Frank. Oh. That's poker royalty. It's good right to have there. good friends. Yeah. It's like being friends with poker's Leonardo DiCaprio and Toby Maguire, who also oddly play poker. Maybe not the best analogy. Okay. Well, Nutta wins a small one here. Uh, so we mentioned that Robin made the final table of the Sunday Million a few weeks back. Actually, was the first player out from the final table. Cashed for just over $9,000 for his ninth place finish. He's 34 years old and has been playing poker full-time since the end of last year. It's funny how the guy we were calling Nutty Ass, his last name is actually Nutty Ass. I could take issue with your pronunciation, but you know what? I'll allow it. <laughs> and luckily, if he has anything to say about it, we won't hear it for 30 minutes. Well... Burning Wind is a player who we've also seen on our Monday night, Sunday million streams, Joe, because I recognize the Roaring Lion avatar. And, and a good start on this well. flop. It's got... So far, card distribution, really a lot of raise folds, raise and take it. Not here, though. Well, I was going to say, you teed that up perfectly, Griffin. Now we have nines versus ace king. And, okay, there's a short stack. We see Deathmaster fold the king deuce there. But, can't help but think we'll see a major confrontation here. Yeah, and on 33 bigs, it's not a hand you're thrilled about like three bet calling off here with ICM. So I think just a shove or a flat actually kind of plays cool. Um, you know, you're keeping all those, uh, well, not with this flop, but like king queens, ace queen, ace jacks in there. Um, and otherwise, you're just going to fold everything out when you, when you shove or, or three bet. So. Well, actually, because Sam and I just flatted pre, this pot being kept manageable. And nines call one bet, 
but another barrel might end this hand. Yeah, this yeah, I would have liked really to very fun. Would have liked to have seen a, a fold on this flop from from Andrews. I understand, you know, you don't just want to check fold a pretty big pair like pocket nines, but when you think about when you're constructing your opponent's range, there a lot of hands on that board, a lot of suited um, Broadway combinations. Clearly, as strong as Ace King, uh, you know, Ace Queen, King Jack, King Queen. So I think you should just probably let that go. Not a lot, ton of bluffs there. Sometimes you're up against Ace Jack, but you know that can just get there. So yeah. Um. Now, John asks, did Burning Wind get that name after a night of hot wings? Um, interestingly, and it's our first hashtag fun fact of the evening, Burning Wind is a code name for signals intelligence missions by the United States Air Force where intelligence is gathered by the interception of signals. The more you know. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Probably some Almost burning wind flop. happening inside the cockpit sometimes too, you know. <laughs> after the, after the chow. I like this, like this cheeky check here um, by Nutty. You know, you feel very confident about your hand, but you're not really that worried about. Um, you know, it's tough. You don't want to fold out those Queen X hands, and you're so under rep now that you might get called by those kind of hands on the turn, maybe even two streets. So. You don't want to, you know, run right into something like King Queen and, and, and get a lot of chips in against better hands, so. So Nutter getting close to 200 million again after losing that big pot on the first hand of the final table. Now opening under the gun with Ace-10. Threes folded, rounds the blinds. King eight of diamonds for Andre, and now queen ten of diamonds for Ngongo. You gotta Ngo with it. Playing in float, checks to the pre flop aggressor. No C bet, Nutter checks it back. This flop is going to um, do a little better for the big blinds calling range, especially once uh, Newt checks back. But Ngongo, you know, doesn't have the kind of hand that feels comfortable starting to bluff on that particular turn card. I think if the turn was a nine or any diamond, Ngongo would come up betting. Um, but at this stage, uh, probably just going to, you know, let go, let it go. Now, we often highlight people who've satellited into medium and high buy-in events. Of course, there are still satellites for low buy-in scoop events as well. And Ngongo qualified for this tournament via an $18 Hyper Turbo sit-and-go. Now wow. guaranteed at least 5 k in prize money, plus the bounties that Ngongo has won over the course of the last three days. Absolutely love go to see it. That's so cool. On the button with Ace 8. And Deathmast, who is the shortest stack at this nine-handed final table, defends with Queen 5 and flops two pair. Deathmast. What a cool name. I was going to say cool avatar, but there's something really quite horrific about it. It does uh, blur the line there a little bit, doesn't it? And it's something horrific is about to happen to Ngongo. You Continues. think you can continuation bet this? Yeah, 3 million into 9.6 million. And I'd be tempted to check raise here, Joe. Yes, I'm bad but also <laughs> kind of want to protect and get value. And there it is. Death Mask. Valuing all in. And Seems Death like Mask, no longer the shortest stack. And Gongo, down to 30 million as Nino 1990 opens with Kings.
There's an ace on the desk always. Luckily, you're still happy to win it. You're like just annoyed still though. Learning wind opens to 3.2 million and wins the blinds and antis. And Queens now for So and I. Paulius Juchis. Just monster hands, every single hand. And it's 10 3 that's opening. Love it. Kanata seems a little fun. Wished everyone good luck at the beginning. Maybe feels a little comfortable having been in this very position not too long ago. What a spot here, huh? What a spot for pocket queens. Probably pretty happy to pick that up. So confirmation that now we're at the final table. The blinds have been extended. This will now play with 25-minute blind levels until the end. Luxurious. Can't really Not argue that for a $55 rollers, but... blind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, not far exactly. off, though. Well, we've got ace-jack for the short stack. Makes it four million. Ace-queen suited for death mast. Yeah, you saw the hesitation there from Ngongo. It's kind of the bottom of the range that you would want to try to sneak in a steal with 15 big blinds. Um, it's certainly going to look strong. No one's going to really mess with you, but you still have to get through, you know, seven other, eight other players. But the ace-queen suited folds, and that's just a reflection of how strong that open looks like. Uh, Death Mask, yeah. you know, expecting to be up against better hands a lot of the time. Ten seven four and ace jack remains the best hand post flop. And a continuation bet will probably end this hand. Nino will give it up. Um so we showed a bit of love at the start of the stream today to Pie Face for winning that medium bind stud event last night. Should also point out that Spraggy is deep in event 70, which resumes in just under two hours' time. You're going to love this one, Joe. Event 70 high, $530 no limit hold'em, four max progressive knockout. A four max? <laughs> you just have to promise me, James. I know I don't have a lot of sway at this company, but if they ever do a three max, you got to call it a threads up tournament. <laughs> well, Unfortunately, they've already given it a name, and it's Spin and Go. <laughs> um, Spraggy, by the way, is coming back into that fourth in chips. 38 players remaining. So good luck, Spraggles. Obviously, he'll be streaming the action over on his own channel. We might drop in if we find time. Could see a very difficult decision here for Burning Wind, opening the, this ace-queen at the hijack. Um you know, if you're normally opening the hijack and get shoved on from the big blind for about 14 big blinds, most of the time you're going to call with ace-queen. On a final table like this, playing for this amount of money, you know Ngongo isn't going to, you know, look down at ace-10 off and shove. Um, even ace-jack ace -jack off isn't feeling that thrilled about doing it. You know, you're, you're probably... So you're already saying this is not a call. I'm saying it's really close. I wouldn't be... I wouldn't blame him for calling... Um, and I would think it would be a really disciplined fold uh, if, if that's the direction Burning Wind, Wind went. I mean, when you break down the range, it's like Ngongo's going to have, you know, all the pairs from like probably nines plus and then ace queen plus and maybe ace jack suited plus. So you're not really doing particularly well against that range. You're, you've only put in two big blinds. You have a pretty good stack compared to some of the short stacks at the table you might want to protect. You know, if you lose here against a hand like Pocket Queens, 
you know, suddenly you have 10 big blinds and you're staring in the face of maybe busting ninth in this thing. So um, I think that's a great fold by Burning Wind. Great. Wow, Discipline really great down. fold. It's almost as if he was listening to you. And for those reasons, I'm out. <laughs> so Nino opening here with Jack's 10-8 suited is folded. King-10 suited for Ngongo. No longer the low man again. Yeah, but this may end up being trouble for Ngongo. Um, yeah, because oh. this is a, a, a better steal spot, but Nino just happened to have it. And it king thinks the, the king! Line. Jack oh! on the turn, though. Wow. Domination oh, rotation. The, the best hand eventually holds up, and we see the elimination of Ngongo 7. Cashing out in ninth place for $8,904.89. Bounty claimed by Nino1990, who now has $130 million and is second on the leaderboard. Never underestimate the power of the Catvatar. Griffin, the ace is coming, trust me. <laughs> well, this is actually a situation where I think Nino's going to have a great opportunity not to uh, put all the chips in with Ace-King. I think this is a super fine spot to just call. You're playing about 60 big blinds deep with all of these short stacks. Um, you know, maybe Marganev, Marganov, pardon me, has some bluffs, but just keep them in there and, and just call. Um, so, you know, not going to see an all-in here, big all-in here. Oh, look at this. Nice I guess we can't ask teaser. too much of that cat in extreme close-up. Oh Having delivered my. the jack on the turn in the last hand, <laughs> it was boy. always going to be a big ask to deliver the ace, and boy, instead oh we get the case king on the turn. The king of hearts is on the case. Now, what do you do as Nino here? Brilliant check back, at least contextually. Doesn't want to risk somehow running into the mega cooler of being up against aces or kings, knowing that hands like queens and jacks might even fold the turn. May as well stay under rep and just call that bet. Calls the 36 million bet. Up on the river and a huge pot of 128 million pushed in Marganov's direction, who is now vying for the chip lead with Nutta as Nino drops down to 71.5 million. Blind's currently 1-2. That's 1 million, yeah, I mean, million listen, obviously, not 1-2. Otherwise, we're going to be here a long time. Kind of played themselves a bit. Um, you know, I think Nino... Obviously going to be disappointed at the result there, but if you look at, you know, coming from that king on the flop uh, for an 80 million chip pot, binking that jack on the turn, um, and then, you know, losing the minimum there against the pocket kings, I think Nino should be, yeah. you know, okay, I'm going to take a break for a second, you know, let's, uh, let's cool off. Channel your inner sevens guy. Queen Jack opens, is met with Who's folds. Who's capable of cooling off? Certainly not me. Not going off with threes. Opens to 4.3 million. Rails, King Ten of Diamonds. Yeah, I mean, you, you find yourself now seventh and chips i think it's uh gonna probably play, play better it's just a call certainly you're gonna have a ton of fold equity against the cutoffs uh sort of you know second and chips range but you know it's a nice hand it plays really well let's just see a flop and we can see flops very well here <laughs> yeah so rails doesn't have a scoop win but does have a w coupe title won an event in the world championship of online poker back in 2017 And a little bit of hope for Marganov. Picks up the gut shot draw. Marganov 
going to be behind the kings and sixes here. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> just a set. Not so anymore. much drama today. This has been so great. <sighs> Rail's still checking it. Any Margaroff shot they goes for fold? just shy of 13 million. You can't fold top pair, surely. It's really tough. I mean, uh, you know, Rails is going to think that Marganoff can vet this to. Oh, brilliant. <sighs> nice. Work. Come on. Come on. Come on. Fold of the century of the year of the day right there. <laughs> Are we saying that's a good fold because we can see the set of threes, though? Yes. Yes, that's exactly why. Folded the worst hand. That's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's that the, one. The, the, I guess the principle of, you know, Rails thought process there is, you know, Marganev it just seems like a weird, a weird bluff. You know, it, it kind of looks weird it looks bluffy it's just like why okay well you, you you just fired a bet on the floor now you're going to represent a five on the river like wouldn't you barrel a lot of those fives like it just kind of looked like you know i don't know kind of looked like he had it and he did uh marganov up to 192 million by the way as we get the shove from andre after the opening raise from burning wind whose instincts continue to be on point Guys, I meant to say Ngongo uh, is Ngongo when that happened. Is it too late? Uh, Rails with the Grafton, 10 9 suited. <laughs> oh, didn't get the memo. <laughs> uh, Neck actually uh, correcting us on Twitch. It's not Rails, it's Slayer. Because apparently we're supposed to read names backwards for the sake of someone wanting oh, to spell wow. it backwards. Jeez. Jeez. Sorry, we're not all you looking for a job, to mirror Janek? people. <laughs> if this player wanted to be called Slayers, <laughs> they would have written their name round the other way. Correct. Thank you for your comment. So Marginov yeah. Knuck J pairs their three. Nino. Ahead with the tens. Still ahead. You know, going to feel pretty good about the tens here, but I like the check because you're not going to really expect to get another bullet from a three, but by checking, you kind of maybe look like you don't really have anything and can maybe get a small bet on the river. Ooh, but still checks. Interesting. I think that's a bit on the tight side. I think also Marganov can have some, you know, ace nine type floats on the flop that would have made a nine on the river. So I would have liked to have seen a small bet there, but maybe just, you know, a little too much intensity the last five hands for Nino. Happy with the one street. Round to the blinds. Markinov in the small. So many I in the big. Raised to seven million. Like this raise from Markinov. Single blocker. ICM pressure. Just pop it up. They're not going to do anything. Oh, got the snowmen's. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> it's about time. And minimal post-flop action right now. The spring cup of online poker is the only time you'll see snowmans in spring. 
The Spring Cup. I love it. How have I not shown that one up before? <laughs> spring Championship. Amazing. God. I'm going to hear from Mr. Pokestar tomorrow. Hockey obsessed Griffin. Everything has to be a cup. <laughs> it's true. Go, Leafs, go. Do you remember those TV shows, Joe, of those hockey players playing poker? Yeah, those were amazing. The PokerStars.net No Limit Hold'em. No, I can't remember anymore. Damn, NHL, come on, so this is like long. charity NHL, NHL, only information you can retain. Poker tournament. American. It's like the only information you can retain. Char no, hold on. I have the DVDs over there. I just can't read them from here. It was the longest title of any TV show we've ever produced. Fantastic. King so 10 fun. versus 10s. Andre still ahead. Nutter with the gut shot. I'm not saying that we're gonna feel treated poorly elsewhere but when we were going to do the canada to do those tv shows we got treated like absolute royalty it was like the one time a year i felt like i was actually on a tv show <laughs> <laughs> they even got me a date once that was actually my highlight of the uh of the uh, shark cage is talking to Jeremy Roenick about uh, hockey stories. Not the million dollars that I won, but the, the hockey stories at nope. Belfour. Hey, hanging out with Jeremy Roenick for an afternoon is definitely worth a million dollars. <laughs> How many bad beat stories did you have to hear? I forget. Not too many. I remember so when Roenick, he first arrived in Barcelona. And the first thing he wanted to do is come up and tell a bad beat story. And the fact that it starts with, so I have King Ace. And the moment he King, says yeah, that, I went, yeah. oh, God. King Ace. Yep. I remember that exact story, too. He was, you know he what was he my, means, oh, oh, James. Oh, and from sevens. Oh. And Death Mask with Ace Queen. Wow. And Death Mask only just has rails covered here. The bounty you know, not I think huge. this is a... Yeah, this is probably a spot you need to call. This is a bit different than the ace queen earlier, but you hate to right. have to do it. Um, but the problem is, it rails because this open have shove all the ace jacks. Uh, I think ace 10 off maybe still shoves ace 10 suited almost certainly does. Then all the pairs king queen suited is going to get it in, so you kind of have to call. Happens to be a flip, We're flipping. But, um, and gets there on the river. Queen ball. Hits the queen, and that is the KO of Rails. Gone in eighth place for $8,725.80. And we are down to seven. I'm loving this. This is so fun. Oh, so anyway, Ronick was my co-host originally before they were um, smart enough to have James come in and do the rest of it with me. And I'm not going to lie, Ronick would struggle sometimes to do like hosty type of things. And then there was one night where it was like there was a Hall of Fame dinner, like just so happened to be the same night as we had worked the next day. And he went out with a bunch of guys and stayed out literally all night, like came to work the next day in the same clothes he wore out that night and was better and was like <laughs> good at it somehow after being out all night was like way better than he had been the day before. It was actually our fastest work day ever. Nom, 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 nom. James never misses a num num. <laughs> he does Nino not. He's all about the eights. With the snowmen's again. So the shortest stack now with seven players remaining is Burning Wind with 38 million behind. Cutie asks, is so and I a Lithuanian player? Yes, you are correct. So let's go around the table actually quickly. We've got Burning Wind playing from Belarus. 
So many I playing from Lithuania. Deathmast is in Greece. Nino, 1990, unsurprisingly in Austria. We've already established Nino knows Votnlos and Andre Letao. Uh, Andre is in the Czech Republic. Marganov playing from Bulgaria. And Nutter, 21. Robin Nuttus, the chip leader, is in Sweden. Pretty fair fight here, but not anymore. No. Oh, Ooh. and now we got rockets. Oh, I went the wrong direction. Never again. Ooh, this is a bit of trouble. Spot of trouble. For Nino, oh no! Don't do that! Don't don't do, don't do that! Yeah, don't do that! Don't do right. that! Get some money in the pot. Oh, Nino, you're gonna look real stupid. You're gonna look real stupid if someone gets it all here. You know, I think I Nino. Uh, I imagine Nino is gonna. Pick up his phone, hit the button for Seven's guy, and say, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I think this should probably play as a pure fold for Nino. Taking some pause because there are some misdraws, but those misdraws, you know, while they are 6-4... They're also, you know, oh. six, seven. Uh oh. Griffin, we need to strap in for the sickest and classicest of races. Uh, Ace, oh, king, no. queens. Um, here we go. Buckle up. Nina opens to four million. Nut up this with is the, the queens. Sex versus food race. Everyone buckle up. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Re-raises to 14.5. Okay. Joe, you want the Queens or the Ace King? I would like the Ace King, please. Sorry, Nino. Okay, I'll take the queens. You're out. Here we go. Ace on the flop. Queen on the turn. Oh, oh no. Oh gosh. <laughs> Told Another you it's gonna be a roller coaster. coaster. Ride. And we see. Nino, 1990, dispatched in seventh, cashing for just over $14,000. Nutter extends his chip lead up to $261 million now and claimed that bounty. What? The cat for what, what? Crazy. Crazy stuff. So six-handed now, and as well as having the chip lead, Nuts is coming close to having the biggest bounty, also worth over 2,900. Pretty loose defend with those two short stacks in So and A and Burning Wind, but Deathmast feeling a little comfortable peeling here. I like it. That is a Griffin, bit I of know a that problem you card. Go ahead. I know that you probably don't go through this, but maybe at some point you did. Does it feel sometimes when you get to this stage of the tournament or even a little bit before this and you're maybe not as experienced that there's a tendency to you see the finish line so you it, it feels like things are moving faster? Like, oh, I can just get there. If I could just do this, there's like a little extra sort of eagerness that maybe isn't helpful all the time. Yeah, I think I think that the biggest pitfall that less experienced players have uh, in deep in deep in tournaments is um, kind of like chip chasing. Is like you could like in order to get really deep into a tournament, there's usually a point where you like amass usually amass a pretty great deal amount of chips, and then you know it always the wave always comes crashing down. Depend it doesn't have to always be all the way back down, but you know you can lose half your stack, right. and a lot of players will 
will see that high that they're at. And that's why I think it's so difficult to survive these, these massive fields because there's always going to be those ebbs and flows. So I think that's probably the biggest um, problem that inexperienced players have is that, you know, maybe they had a uh, 150 big blinds and, you know, five hours into the tournament. And then, you know, you lose some massive flip for 60 bigs or something like that. And suddenly you have half what you did and, you know, you maybe don't play as well, opening too much, start chasing chips. I think that's the biggest problem people have. It's like, you know, at some point you're going to be short stacked and you're going to have to, you know, find the best spot possible to get your hand in. And, you know, sometimes I think players don't necessarily find the right spot. I agree. So we, but I also see blind, think that the blind domination situation here and Marganov raising after Deathmast just limped. Wow. And a shark from Sumanai. Huh. Yeah, and yeah, it just. I think sage. sadly too, Griffin, that, that happens less and less now. Like, people are too good. Like, you just don't see people yeah. tilted off the way you used to. Mm -hmm. Flush draw for Nutter. And still has the best hand with Jack High. You know, I just have to say that I uh, had about, I think, one point six million chips in this tournament i thought that i was like deep you know <laughs> that's why i seen this <laughs> lines have just gone up to 1.25 2.5 million and we've got a raise from jacks it's death mast and marganov this is the kind of hand that you know, we can see a lot of aggressive preflop play. Very disciplined fold there. Maybe recognizing the death mass, not really coming after a lot of steals. Um, Marganov also just raised over his small blind limp. But this could be trouble here for either the Lithuanian on the button or Burning Wind in the small. Um, certainly an argument for Sowine to shove a hand like ace two suited. We just talked about these suited wheel aces that, you know, can, can play pretty well for under 20 big blunts reshoving, getting a lot of folds. You have the blocker and then 30% against virtually everything except aces. I'm sorry, Griffin. Did you, uh, did you say blocker? <laughs> I just want to let you guys know that these are now available on the, uh, on stapes.com.com. If you want to be a part <laughs> of my, um, my blockers aren't real. Uh, religion really is what I'm calling it because that way I don't have to pay tax on it. This is really cool kind of for so a... Wow. I mean, it kind of sucks. You're putting in, you know, 25% of your stack or whatever it is, but, you know, don't expect your opponent to shove light on you when you three bet there. So may have just saved himself and also saved burning wind folding that ace do suited burning wind almost surely puts in the ace 10 and is probably eliminated in sixth place so really surprised to see no one get taken out there two short stacks at the table now nutter still out in front with 260 million it's not connected with this flop and faces a bet from a better hand king queen high And you can see now Knut and Marganov really pulling away. Both, yeah. they have a combined 460-ish thousand, and no one else has more than 100K. Well, we look could at this? get to a flop here. Yeah, ace three open. Yeah. King, queen suited, flattered. Tens flattered. Hard to get oh, a four-way final to. table pot. Yes. Oh, and it's poor Ace Trey with, with just a heart. Just a heart. A second heart out there. Well, yeah, he could have had, it could have been There's two hearts two and cards eight, to a come. King. There's still two cards to come. We could get a heart on the turn. I don't think that we will see a turn card. What with Burning Wind here flopping top pair and having an SPR before this bet of 
just over one. So hmm. very happy to take that down. That's a raising on the button with eight deuce suited. Marganov defends with queen 10. Oh, just flops ah. a straight. Hey, it's 420 and Marganov flopped the joint. There you go. This is enjoy this everybody. Is connect to your flop. Oh, oh diamond boy. draw. And cannot might use that as an, that as an opportunity to start betting to fold out yeah. some ace highs. Maybe even bet big enough to scare off a nine eight or nine seven. With that sizing, definitely targeting more of the ace X hands that are well ahead of just the eight deuce. I was gonna say, I think that sizing's targeting a diamond on the river. Uh, now this is totally bluffable. Like this is love it. Pretty wild. Terrible run out for Marganoff. Isn't that always the way? I'm so mad at this. I'm furious. Well, it feels bluffable because we know what Marganov has, but Newt doesn't, you know? He's expecting that Marganov is going to have a fair bit of kings and jacks in their range. Could easily have a king. Wouldn't be betting a king on the turn. Um, so, yes. Knut does go for it. Is that too small, though? I hope it is pretty small. Yeah, yeah, it's going it to be useful cold. for a straight, for sure. <laughs> Turns out, yes. I think That's that river bluff was too small. I don't know if we need to reiterate that. Might have been too yeah, small. Yeah, or Markinoff. Do you think it was, do you think it was too small? Over 200 million. A little small, yeah. A little too small, I think. Let's talk about it during the break. Chat, what do you think? The, do you think that bet was too big or too small? Got a pole one, running. One for too big, two for small. Three for too small. <laughs> it's like that uh, that that line from Major League is like one of my favorite lines of all time, where the guy crushes the home run and they're out in the stands, and he's like, "Ah, it's too high." <laughs> <laughs> Fair fight here between the Queen Jack of Hearts and the Ace Seven, especially with that Ace folded. But look at all those Queens folded, and that's the flop for Burn and Wind. A hunk, a hunk, a burning wind. And Queen Jack now drawing dead. Just what you want to hear. Drawing dead can't pull ahead. All these checks may mm -mm. bring out a bet here, but no good discipline. Too small. The river check was the a little burning too small. Wind has pulled away from Sonii, who is getting closer to the 10 big blind mark. Not to, still with the chip lead, but not as significant an advantage as he once had. Marganov not that far behind. And what do we know about Marganov? A couple of decent caches in scoop. Yeah. One going back to 2013, the other from this series. How about the Sunday 3 million score? Yeah. That was during the 2019 winter series. He's queen suited for the short stack. And not quite an open jam, but a committing raise. Most 
of so and I's chips in the pot. And now the raise from Burning Wind with King Jack and Deathmast with Ace King suited. That's pretty cool. Three suited aces all in a row. Oh, Death Mask. What a spot. What a spot, buddy boy. I love they give Death Mask 10 million. The too. It's like creepy bunny yeah. avatar, just like Death Mask. He gets Ace King of Spades. Yeah. Look at that. You pick up like 13 million in dead money. Amazing. Yeah, dead money for Death Mask. <laughs> like my money. <laughs> my money dead. <laughs> Okay, Queen's still good. Lucky for Soane not to flop something like a nine or a you know five six eight board or a jack ten. So far behind against the Queens. And that's a fold. Wow, three whole players wrote back uh, to the questionnaire, huh? That's pretty good. <laughs> A6 shoves on 10 7, and so many are forced to fold. You know, you think so and A would have learned their lesson after limp folding the 9-3 a few rotations go blind on blind, but nope. 10 big blinds, limps to 10-7. Come on! For Lithuania, yeah, man! Ace, king on the button, 10 big blinds. And again, the committing raise, question Griffin, Ace, six in the big. I don't know, it's... Pretty blah. Like, yeah, in a normal... Uh, with the bounties, it's probably different. Yeah, I think you may have to go with the bounties. We haven't discussed that much so far, this final table, but it's certainly a consideration. It's tough. It's weird to discuss it because, you know, relative to the buy-in, they're big, but they're smaller than what we're used to, right? Other than this twenty nine fifty, yeah. You know, you're looking at these these eight this $800, yeah. this $900 bounty here, and we're like, well, maybe not for that. You know, also, you know, c compared to let's say a $900 bounty or a $1,200 bounty, which is half the remaining field here. It, it, it is, it is somewhat dwarfed by the prize jumps, uh, which in some of the other tournaments, they're not as much, you know, sometimes a prize jumps like eight K and the bounty is worth five or six. So, um, they are obviously a factor, but not quite the same. I would say as they usually are, at least relatively speaking. Touche. Anyway, touche. It was, Ace King versus A6. Ace King held. So when I got the double up, is still the shortest stack at the final table, though. Not that far behind Burning Wind and Andre, though. And we have the race from Ace 10. The call from King Jack suited. Let's have another multi way pot. I like multi way pots. Nah. King Five. King five. Yeah. Come on. Although when you, you got to be in it to win it with King Five, you you're a little bit oh, annoyed with this. My, there you go. Oh well, no, actually, Ace <laughs> but the ten, 10 though, better right, yeah. dog. Right? No, you're like, but you're just like, God, I really need to see a showdown here to make sure I'm not. <laughs> I didn't. I shouldn't have called the King Five. Damn. I think uh, Deathmass is gonna expect a ten after a bet and a raise on the turn. As we get our first throwable of the evening. Who had that in their bingo card? Six left. <laughs> and it was the horseshoe followed by <laughs> Batia Igru. I'm not sure I should have said that out loud. It might not be polite. <sighs> the thing they don't tell you is that horseshoe comes directly from Fedor Holtz's butt. Because he's lucky. <laughs> oh, God, Griffin, funny. come on. <laughs> so funny. Dead. 
death mast. Sounds like an Adult Swim cartoon. Joe, when uh, when the world resumes to normalcy at some point in the next however long, will you wear that shirt to a bar? <laughs> Tell me how many people ask you about it. The blockers aren't Absolutely. real. <laughs> well, let me explain. Let me explain to you how this works. <laughs> so in poker, it's there's this thing that like these pros, all the you know big. How shots, long have you got? I mean, this thing called blockers. What a, <laughs> what a great Pull conversation a starter! You have to explain what yeah. poker is the concept of blockers and then present your thesis <laughs> as to why you don't believe in them. At which point, yeah. Yeah. if they're still there, you need to be concerned about the person you're talking to. Also, yeah. that person is going to be like, actually, it sounds like they're, it's quite a legitimate mathematical concept that probably are real. <laughs> yeah. Like anyone reasonably intelligent will know that I'm completely wrong. <laughs> Marganov bets get to fold, and we have hit the first break of the evening with six players remaining in this progressive knockout special edition of the Sunday Million. Well, Griffin's going to take a quick break because we're going to look back at the result of last night's 5K PLO. One of the OGs of the EPT, Noah Exclusive Birkin, came into the final table as chip leader and exited as champion winning his third career scoop title and more than 157K. And we are thrilled to have Noah join us on the stream. Congratulations. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Yeah. I thought to myself, what does it take to uh, talk to my old friends again? But I guess winning a tournament <laughs> uh, gets me, gets me there. Hi, good oh, to see you. And, uh, <laughs> good to see you guys. Yeah. I mean, it would have been nice if someone told me there was a stream yesterday. I had no idea. But now oh, I know, understand why, ev why everybody was playing so good against me, but they saw my cards. So, uh, <laughs> I, I had wow. no idea. But here's still, the thing, I Noah. Managed... You were winning yeah. trophies in 2005. You're still winning events today. Not too many players can say that. What is the secret to your success? I mean, uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a dinosaur, you know? I'm, I've been there uh, for a long time. What's my secret? I, I would say uh, experience. I mean, I've been playing for so long. Um, I always play to win. So people ask me, hey, how come you... I mean, I either win or I'm, I'm out really quick. So I don't really care about ICM or moving up a few spots. So uh, I give myself the biggest chance to do really well. Um, that's why I also pick mostly mix events or PLO events because the no-limit events are just... The fields are too big. The players are too tough. I mean, it's pretty much uh, you're playing against robots, it feels like. so. And I don't even enjoy it much. I mean, I'll play the main events and hopefully do well in life. I play some EPTs and other events, but I really enjoy like the mixed games or the PLOs. Right. Uh, Noah, talk to me about life yeah. in the smoothie business. Is the juice worth the, the squeeze? The juice is... Uh, I mean... In the end, the juice, uh, we're paying juice either way. If I'm making juice, it's costing me money. It's a tough <laughs> business. We've been, doing this. Uh, I've been doing this for seven years. We got like uh, nine juice bars in Amsterdam. We got one franchise in New York, one in Memphis. Uh, we had a big plan to roll out more, but then the pandemic hit. So we're, we're trying to stay alive. Uh, luckily, a lot of people now understand being healthy is kind of important. So that's good for us. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's different than poker. I still play some scoops and W coops and uh, hopefully live poker soon again too, but not much. I'm not, I mean, I started to play in 2000, I think 2001 on poker star. So that's like 20 years ago. So I've been around. Yeah. And I'm still there. I'm happy about that. And uh, yeah, the juice business is just something else. We do all organic smoothies, uh, juices, like smoothie bowls. I mean, next time you're in Amsterdam, uh, Come see me. I've been. I've been. I loved it. I had. A, I, I. Me and Steve O'Dwyer went there. We had. A, we had a great time. Good. Yeah. Steve is a, when he's here is a good customer. It's good. A good one to have. <laughs> I mean, it's awesome that you still show up for the major online series, Noah. And are we going to be seeing you in the main events at the conclusion of the series? Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. I think I played one event last week, but I mean, three weeks is just too much. So I always play like the last week and. I think yesterday was my second event and or, or when we started Saturday. 
so pretty lucky. I mean, I, I, I got a big stack pretty early gambling a little bit and never looked back. But of course, I mean, I play good, but you have to run good too. Otherwise there's no winning in poker, yeah. but I'll be, I'll be playing, uh, I think every day except Friday, there's not much going on, but, uh, hope to be back in another interview, uh, when the main event ends Wednesday or something. <laughs> Us too. Well, we would love to talk to you again when you win your fourth scoop title. But for now, Noah, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, guys. See you next week. So Noah took down the PLO last night. Now we have the small matter of the Sunday Million Special Edition to conclude. And right now, six players remain. Start of day chip leader Robin Nutter still has the biggest stack, but Marganov is closing in. Let's head back to the final table. I will leave you in the company of Griffin Benja and Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies, and welcome back to the Sunday Million Scoop Special Edition of $55 buy-in that had 28,000 some odd entries. And we're now down to the final six of those entries. Domination Nation had another first flop. Joe Stapleton, Griffin Banger. Smoothies for days, that guy. Love to hear it. Yeah, he's got, I mean, he's got... Places in New York and what did he say? Nashville, another one? That's fantastic. Good for him. Griffin, if you were going to open a, a side business, what would it be? Whew. Um, I make a mean scrambled eggs. They're famous. Well, my girlfriend okay. calls me your famous scrambled eggs, so probably so I'll keep making them. That's good. All Little right, some kind joints. of greasy spoon. Sure, yeah. Griff's like taters are... Maybe we could open a bed and breakfast. I can do the bed. You can do the breakfast. It's all in for it. the nines. Knutta is going to oh be boy. calling it off. Yeah, and really no reason for Knutta to shove the 200K here. You know. But does anyways. Or can. Is allowed to. <laughs> nines holding. Is allowed to. Needs. Deuce. No. <laughs> Fades everything. That is a double up. For so and I. And more monster hands. Like, this has been insane, right? This joke has yeah. been made before, but it's like we're playing with a pinochle deck. Like, it's just ace, king, tens, king, jack. This is, this is moving the way that, like, old school poker would be, where they would only show, like, the big hands and the big flips. That's pretty much what this is. Yeah, it's like a be. highlight show. Yeah. So ridiculous. King high flop here. Tens immediately falling by the wayside. Going to call one at least. Yeah, not a lot of incentive for Marganov to three bet get in these 30 plus big blinds, even though it is in pretty late position. Keep the worst, ha worst hands in there, not get cooled against the better ones. We, of course, see... The death mass would have happily shoved in the ace king and would be a huge favorite to win this flip. Actually, James, Joe, pardon me. I do that sometimes when it's just the two of us. What are the odds that Marganov can actually win this hand? Four, four Poker stars is lying to you guys. Zero percent. There were two folded tens. Oh, man. You get me every time with that one. Uh, by the way, maybe we saw a little bit Blockers. of a light call there with the tens. Oh, they're real. Blockers. 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 Are real. All right. That's that's one of the few cases when it was real. Uh, we saw a good point here on Twitch that uh, from Scooby who said Marganov would have flopped the set with those fives there. I know that you guys don't like to look at that as professional poker players, but us us spectators go, ah, that is set. I did notice that as Ace well. Ace King has been. But as a professional, I'm not allowed to, to bring it up. I hope right. that you people will. Right. I was not supposed to be in the hand with fives. What do I care if there's a five on the flop? I'm a professional poker player. I don't care about stuff like that. Four nice win. job for Nutty here winning this with a 10-4. Um, I was going to say I was I was half expecting Nutty to start attacking those limps from Andridge. Uh, the last time, Nutty had just checked back the 3-6 and then lost 
Um, so I was expecting maybe such a terrible hand to just pop it up, but would have ran right into the blade of Ace King check, limp shoving. Nom nom. Nom nom. Nom nom. Another good squeeze Jeez. spot here for Kaneta. Margin off. Just, just doing a lot of favors. For James Kinnity. hates missing a num nums. Ooh, love uh, this strong the, play. I was hoping for the four four uh, four strong. bet B. Eights fold. Oh boy, another cooler situation. So Winnie I with Ace King, the biggest of slicks. Um, but fortunate for Nutty, it does appear to be a situation that will play easier as just a call. You don't want to three bet and get in almost 40 big blinds here Griffin, and effectively half your stack. Have you not been watching this person play? <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, you know, it can play fine as a three bet fold. I don't think Nutty's going to be feeling good about calling off here with ace queen. So, um, I just don't think it's going to be a 200 K pot is the thing. You know, you can lose 13.75 here, or, you know, you can lose potentially even more if you just call and it comes ace high. So, Nutty, in a way, turning this ace queen into a bluff. Does three bat fold? Sixes for burning wind. And we have such a nice little fair fight with the Lithuanian in the big blind. King 10 suited against sixes, no diamond. Look at that. 49-6 against 54. 50.4, pardon me. You love to see it. Could be anyone's. Burning wind continuation bets into the out flopper. More like burning chips. But does do they have more barrels in them on further streets? So an A. Oh, don't fold so an A. No! Wow, we just ditches the pair. Sometimes you, know, you believe. You know, Griffin, I know that you're supposed to call, you know, like I fought the pair, I got to call once. Has anyone in the history of poker ever improved? I don't think so. Uh, margin off with. Thank you, thank you for your question. Overs. And a queen. Bottom pair for burning wind. Ooh. Get I mean, right out of here. So many I would do. Off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're not going to be able to continue to near 10 million here, but is taking some pause such a range advantage from Marganov. Even if you do call, thinking you might be ahead there as another big. <laughs> Couple of hands. E. I want to give a little shout out to uh, Yepi Tano on Twitch saying six seven easy call, and that's why he's one of the best. I mean, that's why you know. Yep. The fact that's why that we've all heard of Yepi Tano. That's why. Yeah, we really appreciate you popping by and. Oh no. That <laughs> escalated quickly. Good fold. Another good fold from Knuddy. Or as Yepi Tana would say, it's Jack suited. Easy fold. Deathmask picks one Shot up. Real on Twitch saying, ha ha ha, I hadn't seen that animation before. Well, that's because usually um, things escalate kind of slowly, but on this table. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know that this has been brought up before, but do we think that Deathmask may be meant to write death mask? And it's just like, what is hmm. a death mask? Like, what? A. A big wooden pole from a ship? Maybe he's a pirate. But, you know, what's clearly in that avatar is a death mask. Did 
Yeah, I mean, ooh, see now this limp, I like, I like a lot. Probably you, you, you're not limp. You're not limp shoving here, are you? Well, you know, I would for I would for thirty bigs. So uh, you know, you can make the argument for thirty eight to just say, yeah, show me better. But probably not going to with the other stacks that are shorter. I think it's a bit of an ICM disaster. You don't want to just get coolered here. Keep those yeah, bad okay, hands good. in, like the deuce four mm -hmm. off. This is not a very good flop for Deathmast. Um, but it's also not a board that Marganov is like thrilled with Deuce Four to continue on as we see the check back. Going to expect Deathmass to have a lot of hands like King Jack, King Queen, you know, Ace Ten, Queen Ten, those kind of hands. We see, of course, Deathmass does have pocket sevens and maybe would have let it go on this flop given given the uh, size of the bet. But Marganov does check it back, and now we're going to see with some more equity turned. And Two, yeah, three, Marganov. Four, six. Nope, seven's good. Sevens are good, and Marganov is not going to three and a half X this, I think, pre and then check down to the river with four high. At some point, you've got to bet the bottom of your range, and I think that um, the river will probably be the time to do that. Yeah, Marganov doesn't want to lose to a hand here like you know, ace five of diamonds, um, you know, queen jack even, hens that will probably fold to a bet on the river. Sevens, I think, is too good of a hand for Deathmass to fold. And I would love to see a call here. Really getting a pretty good price with just 7.5 million into less than 20. Representing about a... 27 28 percent pot bet i mean oh it's just it feels so bad you're not even beating an eight like they could value bet an eight at this point maybe more like 35 ish and does call nice, nice call i would have folded for sure the do ass easy call yeppy we don't really know what's going on until yeppy weighs in Ace five suited, brazing from Deathmast. Deathmast versus Burning Wind. Deathmast. Much better. If I did that once, that would take like an hour off of how long I could do commentary today. So <laughs> lines are going up. That's why they call me the voice. They don't call me that. But if you guys want to Griffin. change my nickname from Unicorn to the Voice, I would I'd be okay with it. The voice of corn. <laughs> Raise and take it for Marginov. Ryan Man says, I've been watching poker for so long, it feels like Stapes is part of my household. Yeah? Turn around. Oh, he's not there? Okay. Andrew, 7-6. I, I, I left six. early this morning. <laughs> <laughs> His mom insisted I leave before the kids woke up. <laughs> Queen seven suited. Burning wind. Kind of likes to defend. He likes a good defend, a good king for defend. He does. There it is. Ace high flop. Should be a relative quick end to this hand. Oh, the old check back. The four picks up a draw now. Sneaky deaky. Big baller 5500 asking uh, when you will play, Joe, saying you are their hero. Joe likes to play very infrequently, and he's kind of the secret weapon of poker stars. He'll play and just beat all, all the other commentators and then go into <laughs> retirement again and just joke about how I was like, oh, I just got lucky once. Like, I'm just like everyone else. But really, he's a dynamo. I don't know what things would be like for me if I played poker consistently. 
I don't, I don't play enough. You know, things are supposed to even out. I don't play enough for that to have happened. Variance wise. Para Jax is good for death mass. I don't know if you heard the reason why I don't play big baller. Thank you for your question is um, on April 15th. Uh, the U S government really cracked down on online poker in America. Uh, April 15th, 10 years ago. So you might not have heard of it, but it prevents a lot of us here in this country from playing poker, especially on the greatest poker site in the world. Poker stars. Sorry, was that not clear? Probably. Probably should. Shouldn't have hesitated so long. I said that. Okay. If it's the best, you need to let it speak for itself. They all knew, Joe. You made it right. Weird, exactly. It. Everyone knew. So I just forgot knew. what it was for a second. <laughs> Well, blind on blind, seven nine suited, jack seven off. And a pair of jacks for So and I. And if there's one thing So and I likes to do, it's fold middle pair on the flop. That's true. Oh no. Oh, margin off. This is oh, just no. mean. I mean, he can't possibly fold the flop, but I'm, I'm if there's a club on the turn, okay. That's kind of there a bad, bad card for for Marganoff, kind of a kind of a bad card. Improves, but improves to sh to some showdown value. So checks. Yeah, it's it's Full literally the worst card here. in the deck for Marganoff because yeah. not only is, are they now drawing dead, but they might think they have the best hand against the hand like you know Deuce Four, Deuce Five, Four Five. That would have oh, that's a big you know, check back pre, maybe called on the flop or any three X. Marginal. Now Griffin should have the. I can see all the hold this. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can see all the hold cards. I I would have liked to see a slightly smaller bet here because I feel like all of the the hands that you're doing well against would probably only smell uh, call something smaller, right? Um, I understand what what you're what what you're trying to say, but um, in a way, the principle is kind of backwards. If Marganov has an ace, going to call pretty much any size there, you know, up to okay. 10, right. 11, 12 yep. million. So all the other hands are probably going to fold anyway. Uh, so you may as well, like, you know what I mean? It, so the it, size the only, is good. I think the size is pretty, pretty good. You're going to get a call from an ace. Good. You're going to get a call from any other Jack. Um, and then all those hands that were bluffing on the flop are, are going to fold anyway on the turn. So you may as well make it, make it big and charge the hands you've just improved against. Like the jack Got tens it. or the fives, whatever. There you go. Cool. Thank you. Man, all the notes yeah, I it's, have it's, are about the turn. I can't I can't <laughs> add another turn note or I would write that down. <laughs> it's 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 yep, it's Tano, hard. let's it's like, go. Six seven easy call. Yeah, it's it's hard because uh we can see the cards, so we know what, what hand you should be targeting betting against, right? right? Yeah. But, no, and I'm fully, I'm fully um, cognizant of that, and often try to say to myself, "Would you really be saying this?" If you guys, we got Joe. We have a see you. We have a great callback in the chat. To the easy Yepi call. Tano, you know, we were making fun of you earlier, but he just said, "Let's go six seven easy call." It's a great callback, and you know, Joe's a comedian. I appreciate comedy. We love it. Good job. Six seven easy callback. <laughs> Full circle. Canuddy. That was great. Canuddy with the ten seven of diamonds, death mast. A lot of folks are gonna raise their hands that are this far apart. Not this time from death mast. Just takes the flop. Does largely miss. Has a bad gut shot. Joe is a comedian, Max Mirage asks. Yes, absolutely. As a matter of fact, you probably haven't seen any Norm MacDonald show in the last two years without talking through his opening act. 
Uh, yeah, Max Mirage, I am a comedian. I mostly perform in urban areas. You ban. Thank you for your comment. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Excuse yeah, me. I apologize. Thank you for your question. Mm -hmm. And we've got a four heart board. Pair of tens, still good. Will Death Mast bluff at this? Will Death Mast have the opportunity? Yes. Am I able to take a stab people? here, right, Griffin? I don't like this nope, and send no these guys uh, comment here. Yeah, Joe, whisper. how's it possible that James being such a, a fish after he saw and commented so many hams? I, I got to tell you guys, I got to stand up for James here. James, not a fish. James and I swap in a lot of tournaments. Um, and I will say this, James has paid me out far more often than I have paid him out. Granted, I've been one outed way more often than he has. But he's no <laughs> fish. He's just a little snug. He knows how to play uh, turbo live tournaments. And he knows he's a min crusher. Okay, so Joe, I don't have banning privilege and I don't have the uh, little the thing to do the animation. So can you please do sure. your job? Thanks. There and they are. You're banned. Look at him go. Oh, what a time. What a time to get out of line. So witty. What a I, time to be alive. I feel like Marganoff always puts in another bet here and then this hand is over, but. Oh, yes. No, all Does right. It. Doesn't do it. And what a terrible flop for two aces. No spade. Well, it, it makes your decision a lot easier. Um, I think Marganoff would be prepared to just check call on a lot of different boards, but on this one, probably going to want to just get the rest of the money in. You don't want to find yourself losing to, you know, king eight with a spade, assuming so and I could just as easily have that. Nice. And gets a little extra money. Money, honey. And so and I, excuse me, and Marginoff with a much bigger than marginal chip lead at this point, closing in on 250 million. But getting a little cocky here with the 5 9. Not quite a billion chips in play. I was hoping we could see someone with a billion stack even at the end. You, you human calculator question. It? Yeah, I, I ballparked it. I crunched the numbers. I, uh, I sky domed it. Amigo Sava says, hello from Sweden. Joan Griffin, do you have any tips for a beginner in Texas? Hold them. Maybe a must read book or something. I almost feel like Griffin, that there is a, uh, like a too much information out there about poker and for beginners to the point where like, I wouldn't even know where to tell you to start, but I think Griffin might have an idea. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't know. What's the, I feel like, like run it once is real good. Right. For, for like probably have beginner videos too. I think that's probably the best training site. I don't know about books. Books feel yeah. kind of like, I don't know. it have been like a great new, new age poker book. Probably, but I, I like to recommend Jonathan little stuff, but if you're like a pure beginner, I don't know. I bet he's got a book. I should know. Yeah, he probably does. I think that Super even if system you read feels one of the books a bit too bit beginnery. It's it's it's, it's dense, obviously, and it's a little out of date. But I don't. Th I think if you read one of the easier out of date books, it wouldn't be that bad as long as you followed it up with something else, right? Because I feel like some of those older books, even though some of the theories are a little old are still like a good introduction. Big uh, got two flush flush draws here. here. Yeah, yeah. Spades for days. And you know how much Death Mask loves spades. A spade is kind of a Death Mask, isn't it? You could just get impaled yeah. right on it. Yeah. I feel like Raksha's comment here is a burn on Super System. Super System is great. I have both. They make great bookends. 
You know you're supposed to read them. They're not just for holding up other books. Whoa, 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 whoa. The question is about a book we would recommend to read? I thought we yeah, were Yeah, sorry, I didn't make that specific. About bookends. <laughs> yeah. Death Mast with that big fat zero. Pretty much the only way that they can win this hand is with a bluff on the river. And I was going to say if it's an ace... If it's an ace on the river, maybe he could get a bluff through, but it's the ace of spades. It's not a bluff. It's a it's a value cut. The death mass sometimes deaths you. Ugh. Barry rearing his ugly head, just popping up, be like, ask for one of these? You want to you want to You know, speaking of poker ace books. Of spades. How about Barry Greenstein's ace on the river? A little it's bit a of a story. Very bad in that river one too. card. Very bad river card for Death Mast. Margin off with the nuts. Oh, you love to million. see it, Death Mast. I mean, he hates to see it, but he, instead of seeing it yeah. all in, I mean, that's you can that's just great. call. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's definitely not going to. Well, listen, I'm not going to start. Doing that, Just but. call. Sad, sad run out for Death Mass. A bit of a cooler there. Margin off. Now approaching. That stays in. 300 million chips. Maybe we'll take a flop. Maybe we'll three bet the old sourdough. Nope. Just folds. Nice. Yeah. Opponent Realizes Andre is not. Yeah. Not messing around very much with oh, yeah. that stack. Oh, yeah. Blind on blind. All right. There you go. Those are always nice to win. So win. Yay. And coming into this final table, Nut had that big chip lead, but now I can't believe it's not Margarine Marginov. Massive chip lead over 283 million. And you can see how much damage Marginov can do opening marginal hands here. We saw Canute doing it earlier, hands like 10 3 suited when they had the big chip lead, but now Marginov has it. Wouldn't even be surprised to see him raise this, and does, but is going to run into Mr. King, Mr. Kong, the Cowboys. I woke up with Cowboys once. That was a weird weekend. I remember I had to pick you up. At the M Casino. My horse and buggy. <laughs> <laughs> there is the three bet. Margin off. Forced to fold that slightly larger open. Ace queen now, Swinny Eye. There you go. User 1542 says Jonathan Little's excelling at no limit hold'em would be good for a beginner. Uh, by the way, Jonathan Little's. Twitch name is user 1542. Andre with the <laughs> King Jack. Yeah, like seeing a raise here for Marginov. I think Sowene is not going to mess around anymore after that previous interaction. <laughs> with the king eight and aces. So I think it's a good opportunity for Marginov to make some chips when it's folded to the small blind. And we can see Marginov. Oh, look who's in chat. Marginov, guys, it's easy when you can see the whole cards, when you can see the entire cards. Of course, he is talking about the cards in the hold, otherwise known as the hold cards. Uh, we do want to remind you, though, we are on a 30-minute delay. You gotta love you gotta love Marjanov hopping in to battle the chat pros. 
here in this glorious 420. Eight high versus eight pair of nines. Nine's going to get a free showdown and win a nice pot. Up over 50 million again. No longer Margin a It's stack. really you. I was going to say raise. No. Well, they could do a throwable 30 minutes from now. <laughs> That's a way we could find out. Top pair for margin off. My guess is there's a margin off hand that they're interested in coming up soon, and that's why they're in chat all of a sudden. <laughs> Altizi asking, what are the hold cards, guys? Those are the, just the cards the players are holding. Yeah. No Limit Texas hold them. The cards you are holding, we show you the hold cards up. Ooh, this is a spot, Joseph. Endridge this on 16 big blinds probably should have just shoved this, went for the raise, and now we're going to call it off. Good we are flipping for Death Mass Tournament Life. Death Mass! Does not oh, connect. No. And that is the death of Death Mass out in sixth place for $16,183. Reminder, this was a $55 dollar buy-in tournament. Kanata raising from the butter for deuce suited. Helior remarking, oh, hold cards. I always heard it as whole cards and was confused. I will say this has been a topic of conversation on many a Poker Star stream and I think on Joe and James's podcast. I don't even know where things stand. I think they actually have decided that it's hold cards. I think the ma majority of the community thinks it's whole cards spelt with an H like in the hole. I don't know what the, I don't know what the, what the story is. What's the vague Joe? What's the story? Look, I, I, I got, I got it. I'm not afraid to admit I was wrong. I called it whole cards for a long time. Um, and I, I realized now that that was incorrect. It's no limit. Texas hold them. They're the cards you're holding. Doyle Brunson held 10-2. Oh. Yeah. It's not No Limit Texas oh. Holem. Wait. It's not Holem? Mar no, it's not. Exactly. See, that's a common mistake people make. Gut shot here for Marginoff. Egg Helm. My name is Egg Helm. <laughs> Egg Helm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm going to have some of my morning brown. <laughs> morning brown. So Winnie Eye with a nice three bet in hand can attack the raise of a fairly active player, probably the second most active player at the table right now. Don't necessarily want to go broke before burning win, but also let's deny some equity pre-flop. That is a weird least sized re-raise it's effectively an all-in uh it's but what's it's what so yeah. guy has been doing this whole time the dude says Mr. ace in Carlos. the hole that doesn't make any sense uh so the movie ace in the hole which people refer to a lot it came out several decades before texas hold'em was even a thing mm. so it's not really a way to refer to no limit Texas Hold'em, uh, because see, it's referring Joe's to really done his something else. On this. Trip tens here for Burning Wind. That's it. Gets a fold. But I suppose you think it's full, also, right? Check what? raise or full, right? It's fold, hold. No. No, I'm not saying it's full. I'm just saying it's the same logic. Like, what it really? I know. Fold? I understand I'm what trying you're to full doing. out. Kanoda getting raised here by Marginoff. This should be fun, huh? Let's yeah, let's play a huge pot between the two chip leaders. Twenty-three million in the middle. Kanoda flops best. Marginoff with some back doors. Kanoda looking for a bet here.
Ooh. Not licking their lips here, thinking, yeah, just bet it off. I know you get nothing. I got two jacks. No, I got two jacks, two fives, and a king. And the river is a 10. Should not upset Kanuta at all. Thank you, Poker Star Strag, for weighing in. A very high level Poker Stars employee. Kenny Rogers said, You got to know when to hold them, not when to hole them. It's very simple, guys. Oh, oh, look at this. Nice little try here from Marginov. Not going to work. Stinky. Stinky bluff. Stinky. Much to the dismay of the rest of the table. Brady Head says you hold your hole cards. What? Why would you do that? Why would they give it two names? It's just the cards you're holding. Anyway, I'm done with this conversation for now. Sid's saying Google it. It's whole cards. Okay, Sid, what do you do for a living and what do I do for a living? Let's let's just play that hold card while we're at it. <laughs> which one of us has been a poker commentator for 11 years and which one of us is watching from our mom's house? <laughs> okay, technically I am watching this from my mom's house, but I'm broadcasting it. One of the uh, most obnoxious things anyone can say, by the way. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> I'll, I'll Google it. Google it. <laughs> <laughs> you can Google the moon landing not happening. Doesn't mean it's real. It's true. Mr. Mendes says, I'm watching from your mom's house. Can you please make sure to clean under her folds this time? <laughs> we got an open from margin off with Queen Jack. Burning wind on the button with eight, nine of diamonds. Jeez, I think he's just daydreaming about this. Pocket Kings, though, doesn't have to daydream. Ooh. Oh, what? Ooh. Tricky. And opening the door here for a three-way pot. Knuta hits a six. Dude. Everyone else misses. But Andre doesn't have to worry about connecting with this flop. But connecting with the hearts and minds of 1,932 viewers with this tricky flat otherwise would have surely gone as a three bet and fold and now Knut sitting there and that's pretty much exactly the kind of sizing that's going to be right on the line for Knut anything more I think going to find a fold but right in that sort of 30 to 40 percent pocket just sitting there just like ah but really like what is Knut beating is Andridge really going to take this line with like king queen no so brilliant, brilliant work from Canute there, finding the fold, not giving up 10 million chips. So when I raise in King Queen, pocket sevens from Burning Wind. Yeah, I think ordinarily maybe would have played as a fold or a shove, but we do see some different um uses of short stacks in these sort of smaller buy-in fields not necessarily gto shove spots all the time willing to just call see some flops on these shorter stacks and so far so good so winnie i continuing to tell a story one you would think might get sevens to fold, Whoa. but doesn't. Just gets shoved on. That's brave. 
Wow. I don't have that in me. Do you have to have a move like that in you, Griffin, to to succeed in poker tournaments? I mean, listen, like that was not uh, like an ordinary sort of situation. Burning Wind elected to just flat on under 20 big blinds with sevens. Got a pretty good board for their hand. And then at that point, turned that equity on the turn, just thinking like, you know, instead of going all in preflop, I've gained all this money here. Maybe he's still bluffing, shoving it in. I mean, good for them. Um, Melo7 asking me, Griffin, who is your favorite poker player? <laughs> Probably Mustafa Kinnit, also known as Lasagna. Mm. Sawane, we saw a bit of a tightish fold earlier with second pair. Now in a situation with flopping second pair is going to call. Definitely reacts more uh, sticky on the smaller sizing. When folding that mid pair earlier was facing an under the gun raise and then half pot bet. This time it's just that 30% on the flop. Turning more effective equity on this turn with a Broadway draw. I wouldn't expect Sawane, based off what I've seen, to be thrilled about calling on this turn. But, you know, listen, sometimes your opponent is just stone bluffing. Other times you can just get there. You're still drawing to the nuts, technically. So, wouldn't be surprised if we see Sawane peel another one off and does. As a, yeah, as a general rule, get there. The get there plan doesn't work out for me that often. Now, Sawane doesn't have to get there if somehow Kanota puts the brakes on. Sawane I think this, nice this kind of has, has to play as a shove uh, for Nutty um, simply because your opponent isn't going to have a lot of aces in their range. You know, ace-queen, ace-king, ace-ten, they all shove pre-flop. Um, pocket aces is really the only ace, almost, that Sawane can have calling on this flop. Uh, you have a jack, so you block queen jack. You know, you're up against a lot of king x and 10x here. So I think Nutty is recognizing that and willing to put so and a to the test. And I, you know, I, I would be incredibly, incredibly impressed and proud of so and a if they found a call here. But it's it's just incredibly difficult. But you know what they say, and Joe, about the tortoise and the hare, right? Uh, Nutty's been playing like a freaking rabbit all tournament, bouncing around, playing all these different hands. And the tortoise just been chilling there, waiting for their moment. Is this their moment? I, oh, oh there God. it is. <laughs> Did not the hero call that from So Winnie I. <laughs> yes, Lithuania. Yes. Nice work. Sawi from Sawin. Snapped off. Nice hand, says Marginoff. Brilliant stuff. Would love to see it. And Kanuta drops down below 100 billion. Sal and I now in second place. The timid little turtle folding second pair to one bet. Calls it off for their enti entire tournament life with third pair. Yeah, that is going to be, you know, definitely going to go down as hand of the tournament. Certainly hand of the day. Definitely one of the hands of the entire series. I mean, what an amazing call playing for, you know, a very huge sum of money, especially for these stakes. Uh, so incredible work there from So and A. Uh, and, you know, He's he's high fiving whoever he's he's going to wake up his mom I'm sure for some high fives after that call in a great position now to finish top three in this tournament. Meanwhile, I yelled so loud I think I woke up your mom. <laughs> not 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 yours specifically, Griffin, but you know what I mean. Uh, sixes yeah, versus collective. ace eight. We got an eight on this. Everyone flop. listening. Yeah, everyone's listening. His mom. Yeah, I got it. 
Heck of a call Just there. LT Still thinking says, about it. Since the Lithuanian did the hero call, might be time to look up how to correctly pronounce it. Put, put Sovenle into Google and have a Oh, you want me to Google it? You want me to Google oh, it, wow. huh? Oh, wow. We're getting, we're getting we're doing this do again? Google it again, huh? Hey, Griffin. Who is the uh, who is your who is your favorite Judge Dredd? Uh, Carl Urban. Carl Urban. <laughs> you banned. <laughs> Thank you for your comment. I'll tell you what. If if oh he's banned now, so it's too late. If someone wants to type in how it's pronounced, I will try pronouncing it. But I can't Google it right now. Because I'm working. Oh, this is set of deuces. Set of set of burning deuces wind against top pair. Burning wind. Oh, Marginov sitting there with top pair. Going to expect to be ahead. Some of the time here, a lot of diamond draws. What a fold. Maybe something like ace three that's willing to get it in for just the 20 big blinds. Uh, but I think that that's really good discipline there, finding a way to get get away from it. So B. Cantor has gotten in touch. Uh, it's pronounced Grenef Shavash for Bishi. Oh no, look at So in the Eyes probably so mad right now. Oh no, never mind. Oh, I wish the river was the six of hearts. Because it would be our first straight flush of the day. And you know what happens nice then? Little. The straight flush song. You guys haven't heard it? It's because it doesn't happen. Um, probably never will. We've been holding on to it for two years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but when it happens, oh, I promise you, it's like we won't we won't just make the it up. The worst part spot. is, it might appear like the worst like that, part is but. I, I have to get up at seven o'clock in the morning every day to rehearse it, just in case. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not allowed to use it until it actually happens. So, any I. Mm -hmm. In a little bit of a dicey spot here. Is about to get three bet by Andre, who's been relatively quiet. So maybe, maybe Ace Jack gets away relatively unscathed for another fourteen million. Yeah, Ace Jack really going to shrink up when the tightest player at the table pops in that three x three bet from the button. So good job from So and A getting away. So and A gets away. Like taking a dip in a very cold body of water. It's going to shrink right up. Two, four, five. Five, four, two. King high ahead. Yeah, we got Jack eight, five, four, two against King ten, five, four, two. Five card hand, holding poker. Four, five, two. Five, four, two, seven. Sure, why not? Two. Shoot is no, no longer plays Joe. It's uh, Jack eight seven five four, King ten seven five four. I'm just reading. I'm just reading the board, buddy. So an A actually great opportunity to win here. Turned some equity here. King ten going to be hard to continue, especially against fifteen point seven million. Nice hand. Nice. The Lithuanian is has the game flow edge on Kanet. Biggest, one of the biggest calls of the entire spring championship of online poker with that third pair. Uh, oh, poor Andre. I mean, Andre hasn't raised light at all in like an hour. It's getting yeah, three bet. Nice. From Burning Wind. Big Baller 5500 asks, Griffin, are you a poker player? <laughs> yeah. I finished 400th at 500th in this event. Okay. 
Maybe. Not only am I a poker player, I played this event. Burning Wind with a massive draw. Sneaky check back from the hot Lithuanian. Definitely with designs to bet the turn if check to, but now just happy to catch those bluffs. Doesn't get there. Yeah, this has been all Sawinii for this. Oh, oh my goodness! Burning wind going for it. <laughs> wow! And Joe, the meta game what? of this particular yeah. check shove all in is that Sawinii uh, just proved uh, they're willing to call for their tournament life light. So this makes this bluff so uh, random and hard for Sowene to ever think that they're winning and folds a king ten. I really think away with you got to fold there. Did, did, Holy did, did, did. Lord, for it, what man. a heart. Hey, on look, a show. Every, every single player at this table has got some heart. Let me tell you. King high flop. Very unfortunate for pocket queens, even though they were up against two kings. This is what they're doing at the 55 buy-in level, Joe? My goodness. Yeah, we got no shot in the 5Ks, buddy. <laughs> no shot. I wish I had the wind same getting... heart as one burning wind. <laughs> I wonder if it's possible to say that person's name normally. Let me try. Burning wind. No, can't. Nope. Can't do it. Can't do it. Burning Wind calls behind with the queen so underrepped. And yep. King but. Jack and a win. And that's really a big pot, Joe. That's going to spread things out. Things are getting spread. Andre <laughs> now second in chips. Burning Wind third. Knutta now the shortest stack. Knutta Butta. You would have not expected that, it. given how things started off today. Kanata in control. No, that doesn't work. Uh, was yeah, there's something there. But now it's all margin off. The chips are spread Keep like PB on my toast. I'm on keto right now. How dare you? You banned. FIFA Koenig one two three asks, "How can you call third pair for tournament life, but and uh, but in completely un, un, unlogical shove with top pair you fold? Context, my friend. Context is everything. Button versus big blind in that Jack seven sort of ten king ace board. You know, huge range for Kanuddy in that situation. It just seemed like such an erratic, random like bluff to make there. Um, when you when you're sitting there with top ten, top pair, it just doesn't." didn't seem like a kind of gear that Burning Wind would have. I mean, look, if there's five people left, you're playing for so much money. It was it was just effectively Burning Wind's tournament life as well. Nutty didn't Burning have much wind. to lose. Yeah, you, you can lose, you know, 50 million on the river, but it, it's it's way more likely that when your tournament's line's not on the line and you're going for it like Nutty ha had the opportunity to do, you're probably more likely to be bluffing. So um, It made so little sense that it made... Perfect sense. Yeah. Jack eight versus fours. Seven, seven, deuce. Because the seven is always coming. Seven is always coming. Get out turned. Club draw no good. Oh. Ooh, not going to work. Okay. Margin off. Picks up another pot. Looks like we're going to squeeze in one more hand before the break. One more hand before the break. Queen high flop. Two diamonds.
And a spade draw now for Burning Wind should be the end of this. No, everyone's getting so out of line. This is so crazy. Rivers of Spade just about the nuts for Burning Wind. Who bets 25 billion and King High is forced to fold. All right. The $55 Sunday Million Special Edition PKO is going on break. And usually we do things the opposite of this. Today we're going on break from the low to check in on the high. Event number 68 to see two players who are on the top 10 of the Player of the Series leaderboard. We've got Renat Zapazamaki Liapin here at this table folding 6-5. We've got Nicholas Astet, a.k.a. Lena 900. Oh, yeah, Lena. Who has changed their avatar to the Brazilian flag. Makes sense, given the performance of Brasilia in this year's the Lena Mina, Mina fighting machina. That's nice. I like that. Vokas with two overs and a flush draw. And interestingly, plays it as a check, expecting to see a great deal of floats on a board like this from NS, Murnov, and Smirnov, I guess. So instead, going to just check call, kind of make it look like, oh, check shove even. I guess the blinds are a little bigger than I thought. Yeah, just 20 big blinds. Plays nicely as a check shove there. Good job from Vokas. We've got a relative cooler shaping up here. Pocket eights for Cantaloupe. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Uh, just seven handed. And Cantaloupe playing it as just a call. Going to be a weird spot for N. Smirnoff. This flat from Cantaloupe um, is pretty strong. This is kind of like the bottom of Cantaloupe's range is calling here. So uh, N. Smirnoff is going to go for it, hoping that Cantaloupe isn't trapping and that Lena isn't too strong. We, can, of course, can see. Lena. Le Lena Ace both trapping King. and too strong. It's get out of the way. It's domination nation. It's a queen high uh -oh. flop and uh -oh. turn. That is a full house for N Smirnoff or N Smirnoff. Unfortunately for Nina Line, Lena 900, probably not going to climb too many spots on the leaderboard. Left with just four, what is that, two and a half big blinds, something like that? If anyone can do it, it's Lena. That is true. And there's the all in. It's flipping against two sevens. If hey, anyone can do it. It's a little John Ralphio there. Fo this person. Fupal. Oh, oh come my on, it's seven one folded. Seven it's left Lena. In the deck. A one outer put that to eliminate now. Lena nine hundred. The seven, it is always coming. There are too many in the deck. It's a Lena long. out fifty fourth. For just 1960. And that is going to leave Zappa Zamaski in prime position to climb the leaderboard after outlasting Lena 900. And Cantaloupe's ace eight does not connect with the board. We lose another player, Cantaloupe 91, out in 53rd. Ace King, wow, raises, gets the immediate fold from Renat Liapin. King Queen probably can't get out of the way immediately. Are we going to see another elimination? No, probably not. Ace high they, flop. Kagus makes the call. They've been dropping like fries, though, Joe. Like fries, I like it. Fries drop pretty regularly at my house, so that makes sense to me. Yeah. All right, that's, the that's all though. we're going to see from that event for now. Because we've got the little matter 
of reintroducing you to the $55 Sunday Million Special Edition, as well as reintroducing you to the voice of poker stars, James Hardigan. Thank you very much, Joe. Five players remaining, marking off with the chip lead right now as we get back to the action as the players return from break. Cards are in the air. Blinds 1.75 million, 3.5 million. James, can I ask what the, the countdown song is? I love that song. I the countdown it song. To it. Do you know what? I dig actually dig out the, the real name. I refer to it as Sunset Over the Arena by Hans Simmer. Uh, because so much of the music we use on these streams does sound like a straight Zimmer knockoff, but yeah, I'll get the name for you, Griffin. If you, it, Thanks, it'll be available in Extreme Music on their library if you if you want to. Okay, great. And we can see with that significant chip lead, almost two to one of second place is Marginov. Opening as light as 10-8 off. Getting pretty unlucky here in that Knut has flopped top pair, but now turning more equity. Um, Marganoff may find themselves wanting to bet this card to fold out hands like, you know, a 9, ace-9. Does go very, very big. And Knut, who is in position, James, um, you know, back when you were join uh, joining with us, Knut had yeah. a massive chip lead, but just things have not gone their way. And now, not at sitting all. there with top pair, you're feeling good on the flop, but on that turn, still calls. Wow. And Marginov with the 10 8 has missed, but a 10 and a hard blocker, a great spot to shove on Knut. But can they do it? Gives up. Okay. So, Nutter. Back up over a hundred million. Uh, by the way, we can't help the fact that the Sunday million concludes on a Tuesday this week. When you have 28,644 entries, it takes a while. It takes many hours and several days. Therefore, the Sunday million special edition does indeed conclude on a Tuesday. Lines now at 3.5 million, so getting up there, but first time we've really seen pretty close in chip stacks. You can see the difference between second and fourth place, um, pardon me, second and fifth place is only about 40 million. Rut row. Disaster for Marginov. Going to be betting this turn for value against those 6x hands. You know, it's not a situation you're entirely married to for all in, of course. So, Marginov not going to be too coolered. No. Domination, rotation in so many eyes favor. And a bet from Marginov, presumably for value, Griffin, 9 million on the river. Yeah, targeting those sort of 6x hands, maybe a rivered 7, um, and actually setting the price against hands you're losing against, like, you know, a 9-6 there. So uh, Marginov, I think, is going to feel okay losing a third and final really small bullet there. And back in action, racing with 10-7 gets folds. Wow, the stacks really have evened out. Yeah, and after this raise, actually, no one over 200 million. And ace high still ahead on a 4-4 deuce flop. And so any I still good. Got 
lines going up in three minutes' time. Playing with 25-minute levels at this final table. Playing down to a winner tonight. Don't worry, Nico. The Sunday Million is not going to extend to Wednesday. That really would be ridiculous. Normally, the Sunday Million is a two-day event. So it does conclude on a Monday. So, yep, the branding does raise a few eyebrows. Oh, hello. Andre asks if anyone's interested in dealing. Here we go. Burning Wind types the plus sign, which I assume means I'm in. Bounty for winner. Of course, referring to the, you know, flat payouts between first and second and how first place ends up getting all the bounties. So that would really just be... So they're effectively inquiring about chopping this, um, you know, what, 45 plus 120 plus 37. Over 200,000. And not in considerable amount of money. Well, it's all kicking off, though. Andre not having it. And nice no one else there. has responded to Andre's question. We had the little plus from Burning Wind. The rest of the table has not responded. And the option is obviously there behind the scenes. For the players at this table, they have the options to tick a box to negotiate a deal. And it is, and we always say this, rare to see any kind of deal negotiated in a PKO event because of the nature of half the prize money being in the bounties. Mm -hmm. But again, I, highlighting what Joe was saying earlier on, Griffin, I think what's interesting about this dynamic is that the prize money on offer, the actual payouts, there is a huge disparity between that and the bounties still available. The bounties don't actually represent that much value compared to the payouts in this particular tournament. Yeah. Oh. No? Good for Andrich to be asking about, uh, you know, doing a deal and then finding a limp raise with King 8. Pretty impressed by, you know, almost pretty much everyone at this final table, the way they've played certain hands and spots. Definitely a lot has changed in the few, last few years. The quality of players even at this buy-in level. Cash swing, I'll get to your question in a moment. Let's see how Marganov responds to this. Check raise from Burning Wind, it's a fold. So Cash Swing says, James, I'm wondering if PokerStar sees they're excluding a lot of players from Sunday tourneys by making them a two day, which lots of people can't play because they have to work the following day. Now, here is a huge caveat before I address this question. I don't work on that side of the business. I'm not qualified to answer this question with anything other than my own personal opinion. And I'm also going to say that any decision that was taken regarding how the Sunday Million was structured and how it played out would have been done with a lot of research and with careful consideration. There is a challenge when you're running a global business and you're trying to account for all manner of time zones. I think you have to bear in mind, because of the geographical spread of poker stars and where most of the players come from, Europe is a huge market. And generally, you'll see that most of the big events on stars start around 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock in the evening in Europe. So it's targeted very much at that continent. And clearly, European players, especially those who are not pros who are recreationals you have a job the next day i mean i can say this for certain i would much rather play say six or seven hours on a sunday night go to bed at a decent hour be able to go to work the next day and then come home in the evening and play the remaining four or five hours that's just me and i imagine that's the thinking behind that decision I appreciate it's not going to work for everyone in every time zone, but I imagine that when the research was done and the decision was taken, that's what probably influenced it. Nice little squeeze spot from Andridge. Uh, creeping up now actually finds themselves in competition for the chip lead with margin off. 
out of nowhere from the rafters. Good for Andridge. Just one postscript on that. One thing I know that every time a survey was done, Griffin, about why people maybe don't play the big MTTs, why they wouldn't play the Sundays, it was that fear of it going on for like 10 or 14 hours and playing until like, you know, 5 a.m. or in some countries, 7 or 8 a.m. And I think, again, that's something you have to look at about whether you split it out over a number of days and do it at a time of day when... The majority, again, I know it doesn't account for everyone, but the majority are available. Yeah. How have things ended here? With a call on the river. And nuts are dropping below the 100 million mark again. I'm interested, Griffin, if when you're at a final table, if someone brings up the subject of deal and you think you have an edge or for whatever reason you're not interested in doing a deal, do you just ghost them or do you actually respond saying no? Um, yeah, I think that you just respond and say no. Um, I think it also... the impl It's about the implication, James. When you say no, it's saying like, listen, I'm, I'm, I don't want to deal. I want to play for right. blood. I want to play in the streets and I want to, I want to win. And I think I'm better than you guys. When you ghost, it's kind of like, I don't know. It's a bit rude. Like, you know, you're, you're kind of, you're bonded with these people. You're playing on a final table. You're, you know, you're, there's, there's some general guidelines. You're like, you should just, you know, I see the yeah, argument. Respond to people. Yeah. It's better just to not say anything than be the bad guy who kind of like puts a lid on the conversation. No, I was saying the opposite. I think you should say something. You should say no. Right. If you just okay. don't say anything, I think it's rude. Yeah. It's just because people are wondering like what's going on. If you don't say anything, it's just, I don't know. JC Voorhees says, wow, was that an Elon Musk rocket? Yep, and he's going to be bringing his space internet to us soon. Yeah, I think I could have explained it a bit better. What I mean to say is, like, by saying no, you're you're kind of putting a flag down, being like, I want to I want to play, and I think that I'm going to beat you guys, which is, which is like a bit of a, an intimidation tactic a little bit, you know? Whereas if you yeah. just ghost them, it's kind of like, you know, if someone starts talking to you and you ignore them, it's like, pretty rude thing to do and that's why i always answer to the chat unless you're being rude and then i get joe to ban them for me my bodyguard <laughs> ac doocy burning wind you shouldn't get much resistance although nutta has shown an inclination not just to defend his big blind wide but raise wide Likes to play. Clearly a man after my own heart. Folding is boring. Well, there's and 10 on the river, but that's spot, not enough. Yeah, in a spot Nutty would otherwise lose no chips. Don't Rivering that 10 might just oh, get... Oh, it does call. Yeah. So this got off to a pretty fast start. During the first session, we had three eliminations, but during the last hour, just the one KO, when Deathmast busted in sixth place. Been playing five-handed for a while now. 
interesting spot here. But Marginov actually folds the best pair. Doesn't want to get involved with Andrews there. Well, not, a, not the shortest stack right now. So many I playing 91 million. And the stacks look big, right? In the tens, if not hundreds of millions, but the blinds are getting juicy. Right now we're playing 2-4. Next blind level is going to be 2.5, 5 million. Well, let's see if Ace Five opens the button, and let's see what Burning Wind does with King Queen. Yeah, starting to see some aggressive play from Burning Wind, um, but is going to elect to just call. And flops top pair. It's bottom pair for so many I. <laughs> Love that. Borman asking, "Are you playing any scoops, Griffin?" Griffin revealed at the start of the broadcast that he played this event not realizing that it was three days long and that if he made the final table, he would miss the stream. I made it to about halfway through yesterday. Close. We have the Ooh. standard Y is the prize pool first and second, almost the same price. Um, because it is a bounty tournament and you get to keep your own bounty at the end. So it will make your first place prize significantly larger than second. Okay, so we had the overpair for Andre still good on the flop. Now Marganov has paired his king. Meanwhile, Nutter still has the nut flush draw. Yeah, amazingly, uh, Marginov drawing so, so damn slim on this flop with the other hands involved. Actually makes the best hand on the turn. Uh, Burning Wind still with third pair and a gut shot. Facing a 30% pot bet is going to call. Andridge going to have the presence of mind to fold the best hand. And now Canute, I think a chance to check shove here. But you feel like you're going to like it. king a lot of the time. So just, just calls. calls Bricks River. Check to showdown, and that is a 75 million chip pot wow. for Marganov. N closing in on the 250 million mark now. And Burning Wind a lot got of the memo. The Grafton rule is in effect, and 10 9 suited is being played. Oh, ace Ooh. high flop, but it's the spade draw for Burning Wind. Gets there on the turn. Ooh. Yeah, this is really bad news for Sawanaway. Can you expect Burning Wind to, you know, have a lot of King Queen, King Jack type hands? So this is actually a bet for a bit of protection and value. That is going to be interesting. Burning wind. So when I was able to make that big fold earlier, but saw that burning wind was bluffing. So I think the Lithuanian is thinking about, okay, well, what kind of hands would burning wind be semi bluffing here? Would, would they really call with queen Jack? Offsuit pre and then shove this turn. Probably not. So makes a really disciplined fold and stays in this tournament with five people left. Good job. Well, pair of queens here for Burning Wind. Looks like another pot is going to be going in his direction. Yeah, 
Aqua Kazam pointing out that the almost 10k jump means it's worth that fold from Suwinio that we just saw. Nothing for Burning Wind on this board. Ace Jack raises, 6 4, 3 bets. Ace Jack calls, 6 4, out flops. Ace Jack. Ooh, what a turn Ooh. card. Okay. Oh my and goodness. Gets there the hard way. Lucker, he says. I I kind of like that because when you call someone a lucker, you're basically telling them they got lucky, but you're also kind of saying something else, right? Yeah. How I has no one adopted that, that before? I don't know. And I, I don't even necessarily know if Burning Wind meant to do it like that. I don't know. It could have just been, you know, like their version, version of saying lucky. But yeah, it might have been a combination. Marganov has oh, now officially oh, oh, crossed oh, oh, the 260 oh, oh. million mark, and yes, SpaceX takes off again. Yeah, Gwyn TV remarks another way you could say it is luck, luck you. Okay, blind v blind again. Jack seven versus nine three. And very interesting just to see a min race from Burning Wind. Okay. I don't think Andre's folding this. That's big on the turn. Para 7 still good. Andre did not pick up the club draw on the turn. Still has the open-ended straight draw. And decides to raise with it. What is oh going on with these God. two? What's eating them? I, awesome. I do feel that the hands played between Burning Wind and Andre are being informed <laughs> by something other than just their cards. <laughs> there is a I mean, dynamic listen, that James, I am very much yeah. enjoying. Oh, nice this is hand, the this is the re Andre. this is the the reality, right? Is that you know we are seeing a pretty small sample size of the amount of hands that these people have played against each other. Um, you know they could have played each other some some some. A bunch yesterday, let alone just this final table. So, I mean, Burning Wind True. has seen a lot of advantage. Uh, maybe seen some tendencies, not just the tendencies uh, that maybe yesterday and on this final table, but, but from the stream, you see the kind of hands and, you know, tendencies mm. that Andrews has raising in certain spots, bluff raising, and, you know, maybe just thought that this was, you know, uh, one of those situations and was just like, I'm, I'm all in. I mean, Burning so Wind, we the to get through field like this you got to be doing some stuff like that and burning wind has been doing it so andre just threw a firework at burning wind and said ace four suited nice bluff and burning wind clearly asking is that what you had what's he actually talking about we're gonna find out ace high flop Okay, Burning Wind now has a pair of sixes, a so expected to shove. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so Nutter says, oh, wow. Wow. Oh, God. Oh, God. This is, this is going to kick off again. Andre's going to be so unhappy. Um, so Nutter clarifying that Andre is talking about 30 minutes and 47 seconds ago. Oh, I see. So Andre, the, the stream's caught up. There we go. I told you wouldn't be happy about that six on the river. My time my now, time mate. Now. Oh, come on. Oh, my gosh. I told you there was something going on between these two. Okay, we need to run this through Google Translate. I want to know what he said. Oh, I, I can't repeat that, guys. But it wasn't nice. Marginov, nice spot here to just take down this 4 million preflop. Anyway, you call is bad. Street flash. This is now getting surreal, and I'm here for it. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think he's out, talking the about the that... Jack six ace queen. Right. Which probably not a great call with ace queen. He probably has diamonds or a six there most of the time. But I understand why he's sitting there with Ace Queen, hard to fold. <laughs> While they've been giving it all that, Burning Wind has very successfully run his stack up to nearly a quarter of a billion. However, not he's not going to win this hand. Yeah. Nope. Queen opening on the button, 9-8 for Nutter, who's down to 58 million now, Griffin. Start of day chip leader has slipped substantially. We referenced earlier that Nutter, a.k.a. Robin Nutter, has made the final table of the Sunday Million, the standard edition, the 109 buy in a few weeks back, finished ninth. Would love to see a limp here from Nutter, not, but maybe a bit of protection because so and A kind of want to wait for them to go out first. Oh, next time I want to insult someone at the poker table, you call is bad. Street flash. Street flash. Uh, Marganov close to three. 100 million chips now, opening with king six on the button. Oh. Re-raise from Sawinii. Effectively all in. Virtual all in. Yeah, all six, in. Yeah. six and a half, seven big blinds margin off. Going to have to call this off. Um, and actually finds themselves ahead with just king six. And there's a six on the flop. No queen or ten on the river. And we have a KO. So Winnie from Lithuania out in fifth place, cashing for a total of $22,777.98. A bounty claimed by the chip leader, who is now worth $3,850, but a bounty is not. Huge chip leader with 328 million, and now Andre all in with fours, rather shoving on Nutter, who's all in with ace deuce. No ace on the river, and that wow. is another bang, KO. Bang. Andre takes out Nutter. Three handed out of nowhere. So, that little you pretty much for 
Sawanawe and for Nutty, I think Sawanawe made maybe the best call down or one of the at least throughout the spring championship of online poker. And Kennedy came in with a chip lead, seemed to play pretty strong, but actually because of Suwanaway's call uh, down there, you know, wasn't able to recover. So congratulations to them both. Hell of a finish with this many players. Yeah, I mean, that was pretty much back-to-back -back eliminations, losing Suwinii and start of day chip leader Nutter. Um, meanwhile... The deal question was brought up again by Andre. Burning Wind clearly still also a fan. Still no response from Marganov, who does have the huge chip lead right now and obviously is the favorite to close this out. Yeah, Marganov can't multitask the chats between our Twitch one and the Poker Stars one. <laughs> Did come into the chat and, say, chat and say hi. We can't confirm it was actually them, but there's always a chance. Surprise Burning Wind doesn't go for some value eventually there with that two pair. Would have maybe got a customer in the pocket threes of Andridge. <laughs> I'm here, guys. Busy. Pocket threes open on the button. Andre with queen eight folds. The chip leader has ace five and calls. And oh, ace high flop, but also a three. The set oh, for Burning Wind. What is the check back? You gotta bet here, man. You Unlucky the... Marganov. Aces and Rivers queens. two pair. Gotta get. Value here, man. I think this is a... Raises wow. the river. What do you do now with hey, aces and fives? Calls. You just got a call. Everything you've seen from Burning Wind is like really quick, big raises on the river has been plus. <laughs> You're too high up in your range with ace five. I do not blame Griffin. the margin up there. Big cooler. Look at the size of that pot. 179 and a half million and now Burning Wind by virtue of that set, by virtue of that river raise is now taking the chip lead. Yeah. And Andre not happy. Oh my goodness. Yo, Long is this like a highlight it. pack where we're just watching the big hands? Because this is just, you don't see three-handed flop sets back to back. You know back. what this is, right? You know what this is, don't you, Griffin? Street Flash. Might be the... Yeah, Street Flash. <laughs> and he checks back. Oh, does he check back? Good for him. For them. Andridge. Beautiful. Well, King of Hearts what is might Andridge stop Andre from losing too much. Against the check. Why? Just bet, my friend. Come on. If he shoves on you, then you can just fold. Sets are strong hands, my friend. And we do have a new blind level. Two and a half million, five million. And <laughs> so interesting seeing these men raised pots. Another set. Just topset.net. See, that's why they're not betting their sets, Griffin. They're worried about people folding. That was actually the third set in a row, I think, James. <laughs> It's just, well, it didn't feel as exciting because it was Queens. Thank you. Shout out uh, on the chat. Who said that? The D underscore U. Good job. And Queens at War said it as well. And Big Baller is just, that's that's too many times. We get it. Everyone else said it. Now you're just copying. Now you're just copying me. I apologize. Apologize to the DU. It's too late Sorry. to apologize. It's too late.
Andre's still ahead here. I feel like that has some potential of uh, catching on there, James. Oh, did you see the FT earlier today? That was Street Flash. Just like if it's just we going need to make like, it a thing. you know? Yeah, if, it, if it's going at like a pace with just like big hands, it's Street Flash, you know? Oh, hold on. Careful now, Burning Wind. It's a fine line between table banter and poor etiquette. Ooh, and that limp is going to be trouble for Andridge playing about 17 big blinds. I think Marginov's going to want to stuff in these Senkos. Just get those fives in the laundry machine. Just stuff them in there. <laughs> I love that from the DU. Burning wind with the attempted collusion. Street flash. <laughs> 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 oh, another set. Come on. Who's doing, who's controlling this up there? Huh? <sighs> little, uh, little RNG gremlins are really going nuts today. They're like up there watching Roadhouse or something. They're like, Street Flash. Not all these sets. <laughs> <laughs> and ace high still ahead and value bluffs well, that's not a value bluff ensure... that's street flash <laughs> yeah, I us ensure we can have a perfect commentator to player ratio as we welcome Maria Ho to the stream. Uh, Maria, I hope you like sets yes. because this is sets and the city. Plus, we are seeing some genuine street flash poker from these three yeah. players and some genuine argy bargy between Burning Wind and Andre. Is this the, the time where I ask where all of that means? What, you haven't um, been watching all day? The street flash! <laughs> <laughs> no, I must have missed the street flash, but I would love an explanation. Well, okay, James. It was just something the burning one said like in the chat. The explainer. Yeah, he just r randomly said street flash, and this whole final, we just realized this whole final table has felt like a street flash. Just all big hands, <laughs> big folds, big freaking call downs, like, just like, we just had... Three sets in a row, like three hands in a row, three-handed. Not kidding. And then another set, two, maybe three hands later. Street Flash, it baby. It seems appropriate. Crazy. Oh, yeah, oh. for such a big field. He's, he's back. Okay. So I imagine he's saying right now, I don't like the way you play, sir. My seconds will call on your seconds, and we shall meet on the moor at dawn. <laughs> I will unbox my father's pistols. <laughs> we will take it in turns to fire our shot. <laughs> I mean, this is an approximation of what's being said right now. You can imagine that the actual version yeah. is slightly more spicy. Yeah. This move by the 10-7 is kind of spicy. Oh, it's been spicy. It's a, just been a it's street flash. <laughs> It's just, you got to get used to it. We're in the thick of it, James and I. We're just like, yeah, this is where we live now. Yeah. We live on the street <laughs> flashes. Still has the time to uh, table chat burning wind here on that semi bluff, but does Ripper a higher pair now? Ah, you're going to suck out at least bet. I know that chapter of my I was book. expecting something a lot more flashy than that, but the check back's yeah. not so flashy. Okay, so I'm just going to give you the general gist of this conversation without going into detail. Essentially, Andre is telling Burning Wind that he plays dirty. <laughs> it's 
it's all going to end in tears. Listen, if you're going to fight in the streets, better bring some flash. Good flop. Domination that rotation. Little smaller burn wind. And now picks up jacks. Limp, 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 limp. He listened. Of course he does. He is in the chat. But there's a delay. Ooh. Yeah, with these two, dy they're dynamic. You know, Andre's just not going to fold a gut shot. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Playing dirty. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. And out in third is. Uh ah! Oh, I thought it chopped for some reason. Nope. That is an elimination. That Very is confusing. Andre. Gone in third place, cashing for just over forty-three and a half thousand dollars, and we are heads up, ladies and gentlemen, in this Sunday Million Special Edition. It is Marganov versus Burning Wind, and the stacks are reasonably even. And you gotta love how quickly Burning Wind plays. It's gonna make. I mean, it's three flash poker, baby. We're going to enjoy it. And there they are. Wow, James missing an animation opportunity. That's how quickly this is going. Well, just let him play fast. No one is going to complain about people playing fast. <laughs> Yeah, and from being reasonably close in chips to, to like five hands later, Burning Wind has over 100K difference on yeah. Marganov. <laughs> so obviously, earlier on, Maria, when we were five-handed and again, when we were four-handed, the prospect of a deal was touted. Now we are heads up. There can be no deal. You'll see that the advertised payouts are the same for first and second. What will separate them is the final bounty. Not only do you take the head prize of your opponent, you keep your own bounty as well, and that will account for a sizable difference between second and first. And we are getting into... Even Steven territory. Don't use it yet, James. They need to be a little more even. But they're pretty close here. A couple of pans go Marganov's way. I see that Burning Wind has very little give up in them so far, just by a small sample. Holding on to that advantage right now. I'm looking and forward. And I don't really mind. Go on, I was going to say, I don't really mind the 3x opens that Burning Wind has been going for um, just because of the effective stack size. But I would like to see Burning Wind maybe adjust a little bit once the stacks get slightly shallower. Well, inevitably, there will come a moment where one of these players crosses the half billion mark, and I'm excited for that. His hands playing super fast. King seven has flopped best here. And is good by the river.
Okay. Burning Wind didn't need to improve, but does. And pulling ahead here, 450 to 250. Just the couple hands ago, we were talking about even Steven. Not so much anymore. Marganov seemingly giving up on the turn, but decides to barrel this river, which I think makes it somewhat credible. I mean, I think there are some King X's that would check the turn there and obviously improving on the river would fire. But again, Burning Wind, not a believer, it seems. Yeah, and we're getting closer and closer to that benchmark moment. Burning Wind closing in on the 500 million mark. And then you can move all in and say, I bet half a billion. <laughs> then you need Mathis from Casino Royale. Half a billion chips in the pot. <laughs> I was worried there for, for a second, James, that you weren't going to make a Bond reference today. Guaranteed every day. Knock it in. Twice on yeah. Tuesdays. <laughs> Yeah. How do you think uh, No Time to Die is going to be? I don't know. Bear in mind that I hated Spectre. So I hope it's a lot closer I mean, to like Cinerale Spectre? or Skyfall. Yeah. Um, I, I'd like to think they learned some of the mistakes of that movie. The trailer looked promising, but I tell you what my biggest concern about it is, is the amount of time that's now passed and how relevant the movie's going to feel. Hmm. Yeah. That's a very good point. I will say I love the director and I love the writing team, so. Yeah, it's got that going for it for sure. I mean, obviously I know some stuff about like some of the, the options that they've explored. I know that there have been multiple endings filmed, for example. Um, there's oh, a direction yeah. I'd like them to see. I'd, I'd like to see them go in. I just hope they have the guts to pull the trigger. With the female bond, you mean? Female. Or, or, or equivalent. Yeah, yeah. Burning wind with top pair here and Marganoff with that straight draw. I mean, it does seem like Burning Wind has that 50% pot clicked quite often on their bets. Um, yeah. Not varying the sizing too much from what I've seen. Yes, Cass Cap, you've, you've hit the nail on the head. We're not talking about a female Bond, we're talking about a female 007. It's the idea that the 007 seven prefix can be given to any agent regardless of their gender. And yes, we now have Burning Wind with more than half a billion. I'm a firm believer that the character of James Bond should be as Ian Fleming wrote him to be, but 007 can be anyone, and that's where potentially the series, the franchise, could get quite exciting and explore new options. And Burning Wind, this quick, quick play, half pot, half pot, it's really been grinding Marganov down here. We started at about 370 to 340, now 500 to 200. And now it's just going to be all of the chips. I mean, I don't know about that 40 big effective shove with King Yeah, Jack a bit off. unnecessary. I mean, I'm sure. Yeah. It can't uh, ever be terrible, but yes, unnecessary is the right <laughs> word for it. 
Large enough. Good opportunity here to make some chips from Burning Wind, but might have bet a bit too big. Burning Wind wise to it, not just a calling station. Maybe throw out 10 million there, get a call, but got a bit greedy. Wow. Burning Wind. Just folding a pair on the flop. A Jack Nine Deuce. Not particularly standard. Seems to be calling pretty much anything to see a flop. Always see a flop. <laughs> Counterfeited. <laughs> Yeah, I think if they were willing to slow down the timing and the pacing just a bit, I think they would find a few good three bet spots on both sides. I think I've seen a few hands, you know, where that type of hand combination, you know, like the weak ace X's sometimes could do well um, as a three bet, but they're just kind of electing oh my to call God. raises <laughs> or and I mean, this is so close. It, I mean Again, it's Probably just, it's a good hand, but chips. Exactly. I mean, if you know that, that, that Burning Wind is doing it with King Jack off, then you kind of have to consider calling, but Marjorie right. doesn't know that yet. Yeah, certainly. I think for 30 bigs, I think King Queen suited after an open looks pretty good, but not for 40. And burning wind with the pure bluff here. Oh. Gets through. Falls for it. Um, I will say Marginoff played a pretty strong final table, but maybe not as much experience heads up. And, you know, I think that fold against burning wind is indicative of a lack of experience maybe. Yeah, and certainly I think when you have an opponent that plays as quickly as Burning Wind, even though you have the right and the option to slow things down yourself as Marginov, I feel like sometimes you end up going with the pacing of your opponent in a heads-up situation. Yeah. And I don't feel like Marginov is taking the time to think through spots the way that they should. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, Burning Wind, I mean, Burning Wind grew up on the streets of flash he's a street flash player don't play street flash just because he's saying we're playing street flash slow it down play your pace exactly don't fold top pair but right <laughs> now burning wind is controlling the table yeah how long ago was it that you observed it being close to even stevens i mean it <sighs> It felt like it was just a second ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, it's, it's been a real slow cut up. Just like Samurai Sword Street Flash. Seems to be winning every hand. And high. Yeah, and hopefully, here. hopefully, you know, with the delay catching up to to margin off and watching some of these hands, now that they're getting close to that thirty big blind effective stack, they will adjust maybe what they're willing to call off with against Burning Wind's shoves, and that could definitely give margin off an opening to double through. And now with the better straight draw. Oh, but Marchinev gets there, throws the wheels on the wagon, and jumps in the front seat. Courtesy of a flaming Barry. Okay, well, still the sizable advantage for Burning Wind as these two players go on break. We are heads up in the Sunday Million Special Edition, but time to go across the PokerStars Arena and check in on 
Day two of Scoop 70 High. This is the four max progressive knockout event where Spraggy is making a deep run. Came back fourth in chips. This restarted in the last half hour. Right now, 31 players remain. And we can see Spraggy has the chip lead at his table. Pretty nice flop here for the under the gun aggressor in Kennedy PK 97. So this was a $530 buy in event. And with 730 total entries, prize pool of 365 grand. First prize of 25k plus bounties. Oh, Spraggy's got the snowmans. No, no, no. Oh no. my. <laughs> what a setup what a set for up. Spraggy. What's happening? Give him the old Spraggle Dazzle. I'm so sorry, Maxim. Okay, well, the board gets straight here. Yeah, you know, depending on the river card, you know, not these, all of these chips don't necessarily always get in, especially if it's played as a check on the turn. Spraggy certainly going to be finding a bet here of well over half the pot. And then it's whether Maxim has the discipline to just call and reevaluate on the river. 75% by Spraggy on the Nine of Hearts. Yeah, of course, you would expect Spraggy to be opening a lot of those, you know, Queen 10 suited hands and Queen 10 off suits. So certainly recognizing that the Nine of Hearts could be a bad card for that reason. But the river's pretty much a brick, I think. So at this point, it would be tough for Maxim to get away. Yeah, going to be very tough, but you have to assume that Spraggy is turning something like 9-10 into a bluff, blocking that Queen-10. You know, all the value hands beat you, whether it's Jack-9, Pocket-8s, Pocket-3s, Pocket-Jacks. You can't really fault Spraggy's opponent from calling here, but when you're breaking down the range, you're not beating any value hands, and a very, very nice fold from Maxim-737 there. Yeah. Let's see what Spraggy does here with King 7. Defends his big blind. Is outflopped by one MTM 91. One third pot bet. And a fold from Spraggy. Raise from Maxim and the blinds fold. So reminder, Spraggy's obviously streaming his deep run in that event. We are going back to the heads up battle in an event that started on Sunday Played down to the final table yesterday and concludes tonight. Heads up for the title. Burning Wind versus Marganov. 103 big blinds versus 39 big blinds. So Burning Wind with the huge advantage right now. And we are going to bring out the quad box, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Stapleton back into the mix. Hashtag death This feels box. excessive. Two players, four commentators. <laughs> we got him outnumbered, guys. It's just about right Get him. for a street flash type of heads up match. So. <laughs> it's true. That is true. If you're going to play street it's flash true. poker, this is how it has to be done. She's in on it, Joe. She's in on street flash. 
I'm so sorry that I missed all of the street flashing. Oh, you missed street Something. flash. Oh my god, you would yeah, have loved it. I wasn't it. here for street flash. <laughs> I know. You also well, missed all of the terse words that were exchanged between Burning Wind and Andre before you Burning busted. Wind. Yeah, so Burning Wind at some point they were talking and they were talking about hands or whatever and he just said, said something and then he goes street flash. He just wrote that. <laughs> And then ever said, since my then, time the now, table has... It, the yeah. line was, it, it, it's my time now. <laughs> anyway, you, was it you, ba you bad call, street flash. <laughs> and then ever since, it's cool. just been crazy action. We had sets in three straight hands, Joe. And four out of six or It's something. just been real grudgy, huh? Oh, oh my God, been, what yeah. a run out. And it's been street flash. What a street Here we go, guys. Stupid street We're going to coordinate this out. with four people. Four people. That was a chop pot. And you know what they say. Everyone, Everyone loves, loves the chop, chop pot. pot. Ooh, there's no way that was good. Is that good? There's no I way that was good. I think that was good. I, I, I'm going to... No, I actually I think do that think that was think strong. That was I noticed start earlier because my delay is usually the longest. So... Look at that. 10 oh, out of 10. 8 out of 10. 8, 9, yeah. 8, guys. 7. Anyone three, that's that rating it below Nine. a 7 out of 10, ben, say, another ban. three. you're banned. 6, banned. 7 you're out banned. of 10, you say. 7 out of 7. You're banned. I don't know how much that equaled. You're banned. <laughs> 2 out of 10, banned. You're banned. <laughs> you're banned. That was just a I'll 3. I don't even, it might have been out of 3. <laughs> I don't care. 6 out of 10, you're banned. You're banned. <laughs> Are the numbers dropping on the how stream yet? <laughs> how long do the bans last? This is so Seven street out of 13, flashy. I saw what you did there. You get banned. It. These are perm these are perma bans. We will never oh, get what them are we gonna back. Do about what are we going to do about Griffin was a bit off? I appreciate your honesty. It shows leadership. You stay. Did you already ban him? <laughs> you banned Ooh, all the people who are there. Who are getting cute with their ratios? I know what I know what five out of ten well, is. If you do two out of four, oh my gosh! Someone said four twenty. I, <sighs> I appreciate that you put like a limit, Joe, on the scores, the minimum score you're willing to accept. But the comment that Griffin was a bit off, I have conferred with the production team, and they tell me that that actually was not just constructive criticism, but actually a very acute appraisal of the situation. And for that reason, oh, what, that reason, kick alone, me out? Griffin, you're banned. <laughs> Oh my ah. god. <laughs> Get rid of Bye him. Griffin. Now. Bye. <laughs> Later. And then there were three. Smell ya. Just Later. to be clear, s still two players. Still heads up. If somebody rates the ratio of this three to two, you're gonna get banned. <laughs> Look how has anyone commented yet on Burning Wind getting to heads up in this tournament and having a very small number of bounties? It's a very good point. And the reality is if Burning Wind is successful in this heads up battle and takes it down, the difference in prizes between first and they're actually pretty gonna be pretty equal. Right? Yeah. Marginov clearly will be taking a three bet with this type of hand. I think that, yeah, I think that, you know, shoving makes sense there. I think sometimes, you know, putting in maybe a smaller re-raise could also work, but definitely getting to that stack size where if you are going to three bet shove, it's perfectly fine. Okay, so Burning Wind has dropped below the half billion mark now. <laughs> the wheels are coming off. <laughs> the wheels are coming off the half billion dollar car. Burning wind. 
Ace Jack versus 10 4. Oh! Oh, hi. Yeah, if you, if you were going to do that oh. with King Jack offsuit earlier, you might as well, but the, I hope, would be shoving Ace Jack suited. Ace King High, still the best hand. Have we ever seen the blinds this high in anything we've ever covered? Oh, wow, he calls it there with Ace 8 and is wrong. It was a 111 million chip pot. No, I think this is one of the highest blind levels I've ever seen online. I'm seeing the next one is yeah, no, three and a half you... million, seven million. I've definitely <laughs> never seen that level before. <laughs> I'm pretty certain, Joe, that when we did the Sunday Million Anniversary, the blinds were much higher than this because that had a field of like tens of thousands, right? Was I there for that? <sighs> okay, I'll take that as a guess. You know, and about that ace high call from Marginov, I mean, it's good to see yeah. that maybe they're trying to adjust and adapt slightly to the fact that Burning Wind has been extremely aggressive. Um, I don't know if that was necessarily the board texture for an ace high call. But again, if you know that your opponent is going to barrel without, you know, any <laughs> real reason or and with reckless abandon, then sometimes looking somebody up with ace high is going to be necessary. Ten nine versus Jack nine. <laughs> this what? I mean, look, I have no idea how to calculate how many big blinds the, these players have got at this point, but this it feels a little reckless. Well, they're playing what twenty <laughs> bigs effective now. Yeah. All right, so I guess it's not quite that bad. It just looks like a lot. One hundred and ten million. It's still a very this is whack. aggressive way this is to totally play. Totally whack. <laughs> yeah, especially if you're like gonna half pot every every street, regardless of texture. It's, it'll go pretty fast. Okay, well this one. Uh oh, here we go. Double up. Oh uh, oh, uh, double up. Don't get carried away, Burning Wind. Oh, he checks Oh, wow. Oh. Somehow finds a check back on the river. How do they both check? Yeah, you got to give it to Burning Wind, though. It does sometimes, when you not, don't expect it, put on the brakes at the right time. So, I mean, James, did they make a deal and they're playing for the 10% of the remaining $3.46 prize pool? No deals, Mr. Bond. Okay. Deuces are good, but does not call. All right, margin off. All right. Oh, oh wow. my goodness. Wow. Uh, wow. This could be this huge. Could be spot. Turning nines into... Oh, I call. think it's called. Gets the double up. Okay, wow. that changes the dynamic now. That is a big one. And I wasn't sure if Marjnoff would have had that call Woo. in them, but glad to see. They made it. Another one here. A five would be bad. Not just the action killer. Our nines versus a pair of sevens. And 
Evans gets to the river. Check, check. Burning we get some back. So fast. <laughs> so fast. <laughs> I'm like, what? I don't, I, it's, I don't, Burning wind taking a lot just, of these type of gutter hands as bluffs. I like to call it a gut shot street draw. Nice high flop. Would you like to see somebody have a gut shot street draw against perhaps a nut flash draw? Would that be fun? <laughs> yes. yes. Yes, Maria. Or ultimately culminating in street <laughs> flash versus street flash. Uh. Three, three, three. That's all we had time for. It was just to say to announce one flop. Three, three, three. <laughs> Next hand. Yep. Jack. Okay. It is Bet. marching off with the advantage here. Bet gets a fold. Race call three. Queen. Bet. A queen. Versus a three. Now this one could get interesting. It's like they're playing with a chess clock. Diamond draw against a wheel draw. And queen high still queen the best high hand. Against five high. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That would yeah, be great if whoever had the better yes. draw would win. Oh, guess yeah, so. I think that the turn was still worth a barrel for Marginoff just because uh, they can represent a stronger hand. But, you know, if, if your opponent isn't going to fold the flesh draw and also get there on the river, then you're going to have... A you know what's bad if Maria is saying... I think the turn was worth a bet in her head. What she's really saying is, how do you miss a bet there, you idiot? And then what comes out is, I think the turn uh, might have been worth a bet. That's how Maria filters her inner monologue to her outer <laughs> commentary voice. Well, margin of managed to claw a little bit back. I mean, Burning Wind had pretty much got Marginoff back to where he was before the double up. And now, it's closed the gap slightly. Burning Wind still with a significant advantage, though, now, and playing so aggressively. Also, flop pretty well there. Yeah, and I don't mind seeing fast plays out of Burning Wind with really strong hands because they have been so aggressive. So for margin off, you know, they have less credibility now and could potentially get lighter calls. But at the same time, your opponents need to have a little something Come on. in those spots. How? <laughs> Come on. I mean, how do you how, flip that how, cue how, and then face how? that run out? <laughs> <laughs> and the deuce. The frickin' deuce. So stupid. Luck favors the aggressor. <laughs> you just keep betting or calling, and whatever you need will come. Luck well, favors the lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Marchinov does enjoy checking, has to be said. This is like the equivalent of listening to a podcast at like three times the speed. I just yeah. <laughs> like what's happening. Can you bluff? 
burning wind off Queen High. Yes. 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 Stalking Geek says, wasn't yes. it James that said a deuce on the river never changes anything? No, I don't think so. It doesn't sound like him. Thank you. Thank you for your question. You banned. I guess the cartoon gray lion kind of counts as a cat vatar. Yeah, of course. That's a cat. Mew. Yeah, both King High and Queen High here feels pretty strong to their respective players. I mean, you just river the best pair every time, too, is one way to do it. Yeah, back up over 500 million. Raising here with Ace-3 against Queen-4. Okay, so marginal flops best. Continues to improve. Now bets. Gets a fold. Okay, ace nine versus king queen could see some pushback here. No, nope, just a call. Yeah, again, just surprised that certain combinations of hands that the players are not willing to three bet with that could and oftentimes should be three bets. Wins that one. It's still burning wind with better than a two to one advantage over their opponent. A pair of nines versus a pair of fours here. I mean, just surprised to see Marginoff not even call one street and, you know, so many good things could happen on the turn. You could improve, you could decide, your opponent could check, you could see a free river and. I just think heads up, you can't really be folding when you have a piece. I like this uh, from Ace King Jack. This is like the naked gun with the two of them shooting at each other from two feet away. <laughs> it does feel like that. Just like, just... <laughs> oh, I like it. I love it. That's it. Marginoff, you know, again, just a, a lot of backdoor possibilities. And good reasons uh -oh. to float. Oh, but oh, here we go. Okay. All the call. And this will end in a chop pot. And you know what they say. Everyone, Everyone loves a loves chop a pot. Chop pot. pot. I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm too too hard on Maria for these, so I'm just. I'm not. I'm gonna reserve comment. I need this to be better than when we were doing it with the quad box because I might get banned now if it's not. Because now we don't think it's Griffin because he's not here, so it has to be me, right? Don't worry, Maria. Like, if, I, I if, if it was bad, we we can still blame Griffin. We can still blame Griffin. <laughs> I can't say for sure, but it sounded like the first couple words from you were. <laughs> That's what I heard. States. Wow. Really? Yeah. I know. I'm, I'm, I, maybe it's just because we're such close friends and I'm super tough on you. I don't know. <sighs> you is cruising for a bruise. Oh, boy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. River Rays from Burning Wind, who has the better kick up with their king. I would have done this no matter what, just to get the attention off me, by the way, right now. <laughs> Calls. That, that and now big. is on. Life support. More than 600 million chips for Burning Wind. 
And we know what happened last time. Marginov got to the stack size. Burning Wind just started open shoving on them. Oh, caught a little light there, but caught a jack. Yep. And is likely to win this 51 million. Oh! Uh oh! Oh! Aces Ace versus fake in. aces. And it's over on the turn. That is the final KO of this progressive knockout Sunday Million Special Edition. And it is Burning Wind who takes down the Sunday Million Special Edition. Let's look at the prize money. And yet, the bounties as they were, not much separating first and second. 76,305 for our winner. Marginov didn't do too badly. 72,692. Uh, Far many KOs over the course of this event. But Burning Wind, crucially, is now a spring championship of online poker winner. And Joe, we knew going into this that this was going to deliver something different from what we'd seen over the last few days. It didn't disappoint. That was fun. Oh, it was super fun. I mean, and not only was the play fun in and of itself, but how rare is it when we're covering the majors when we're covering this this usual suspects do they chirp at each other in the chat box never ever ever you might get a smiley face or a gl or an nh and that's about it this was super fun congratulations burning wind yeah straight flash poker it was lightning fast poker maria i kind of <laughs> how on earth is one meant to analyze a heads up game that's moving at that pace yeah i mean again normally i think with the usual suspects that we do see you would never really get a heads up match that moves that quickly but for these two players you know they just continue to play at that lightning quick pace and it just worked out for the one that was more aggressive and that was burning wind and i think i need a nap now <laughs> so that <laughs> event had a 55 dollar buy and was classed as a low uh from one end of the spectrum to the other because tomorrow it's back to the high rollers and it is a ten thousand dollar buy-in event that we are going to be covering it's the 10k 8 max which starts today concludes tomorrow guaranteed prize pool of a million dollars we'll watch them play down to a winner cards up coverage at the usual time that's wednesday april 21st thank you for watching tonight hope you enjoyed it for now, from Griffin Bencher, Maria Ho, Joe Stapleton, and me, James Haskin, it's good night from the PokerStars Arena.